Hello there people and welcome to the Unique Polish Experience 2020 edition. The first game is 911 operated by Jutsu Games, an emergency dispatcher simulator. You can legitimately use it, this is amazing! Oh my goodness! Look at this! This is extraordinary! Wow! It's, 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 it's just available! It is! So, under 12 did not collapse or drowning. I'm not going to memorize all of this, that's just too much of it. Bang calls. <sighs> However, if the operator figures that the call is fake, yes, the cyber is really necessary to send a police officer to call right away. Sometimes it's better to ignore the call, saving time and resources for most serious cases. Thank you! Operator, it seems like this is your first duty. Shall we begin the training? Yes, please. You'll. Goddamn tutorial has pretty much drained me of the will to live. <laughs> yeah, <I'm d> <laughs> Your main objective is to manage the teams of police officers, blue, medics, white, firefighters, red. Here you can modify your teams, assign new team members, buy new vehicles and equipment, and watch the report summary. This is also a place where your progress is automatically saved. As far as I understand, there are essentially two modes. There's, uh, I like to call them the overworld mode and, uh, yeah, and the other mode. Yeah, as if I actually have got consistent basis in terms of nomenclature. But the general idea is the same as in most games. You have this general strategic mode and the, you still have the strategic view and the tactical view. So here you have this view where you manage your team, buy resources, etc. And then you actually get into the thick of things, you get into the action. You use the resources you have previously acquired to solve problems as they arise. For now, go to deployment. Oh boy, we will not be dealing with this screen then. Now you can deploy the teams to different locations in the city. Left click to select a unit. Then write the units will find their way if possible. Wait until the end of the message. You should remain aware of the hospitals, police, and fire stations as your units may need to drive back to base. You can press space to show or hide the bases. All right, these are the only ones here. There's a single fire department here. Two police stations, two hospitals. Now, disperse your units throughout the city. You might want to use the plus or minus buttons or the mouse wheel to change the zoom level and see the whole city. When you are done, click Start Duty. It's supposed to keep them near the center. Ah, uh, this is... Uh, this is unreachable, huh? There really isn't much to explore here. When I'm done, I will click Start Duty. Now, wait for incoming incidents. Here it is. Click New Incident to display the detail. Now, select a police unit, blue, and dispatch it to the incident by clicking it with a right button. And where is that? Oh, that's the... Good. Now the unit will go to the designated incident and will do their job, if possible. Fair enough. The hex is the incident site. In the bottom right corner, you get an overview of the incident. If you mouse over it, it's fairly intuitive. This seems empty. This when a unit empty. arrives, the situation overview is available. You can find your team members on the left side and the incident elements on the right side of the window. Move the pointer over any element to see additional info. The team members will do their job automatically. You can also manually pick a team member and choose a task for him using the left mouse button. At least one unit should stay on site until all the elements of an incident will be resolved. Now you have an incoming call. 911, what's your emergency? Good 
evening. I need help. Yeah, stupid thing. What's your name, sir? I'm Jacob Kobus. Click the dialog option of your choice to progress through the conversation. Why'd Usually, you, you should ask for the I detailed address first if it hasn't been determined. Until the conversation is finished, the time slows down. Where are you calling from? Around. I'll send the fire department. Thank you. I'll be waiting. Now, decide who should be sent to the incident. You can also choose to ignore an incident if you decide that there is no need for an intervention. Click on the address to center the camera over the incident if you are not sure which one it is. Thank you, that's really helpful. Maintain the public order and save people from harm to earn a good reputation. Carry on until the end of your duty. I will not ignore a feline in harm's way. Even if the feline got in harm's way out of its own stupidity, as they all want to. Go over to Summer Central. Reporting. Heading over there. How are you people doing over there? Oh, we are done. Excellent. New incident. There's a packet left unattended. Might be a bomb. Reporting. On my way. Police intervention. Um. Reporting. Affirmative. Yes. What's your emergency? Hello. Uh, I would like to report a robbery. Are you injured? Do you have any injuries? No, I think we're fine. When did it happen? did this happen? Yesterday evening, on my way back home. The 911 line is for immediate emergencies, not for something that happened in the past. But they took my wallet and my phone. I want you to go to your nearest police station and report the crime there, okay? But they... Oh, all right, whatever. You got any, uh, FTL Lady, I, uh, I understand oh, that, really um, nice. you are ultimately distressed, but still. Yes. Need a medical assistance. Driver crashing. Waiting for instructions. Send more medics. Um. Need for medical. What are the orders? Reporting. Heading over there. The cat is saved, presumably. New incident. Yes. Pregnant woman. Ah, uh, that's horrible. On my well, they are on the way. What's going on here? All right, ignore that. <laughs> you have to actually click that, even if you actually ignore it. Heading over there. You got any waiting for instructions? If there's any FTO or crew for that gun turning, give us an experience. New incident. Ready for the next case. A car was reported speeding. Get him. I'm grabbing over and just getting out of the bait. Uh, requesting air the situation on uh, 77 go and going down. We are ready. Ten four. Police! Stop right there, criminal scum. You have violated the law. Fire! Fire! What are the orders? On my way. Deal, sir, and old madam. Fire! Fire! Oh goodness, uh, yeah, yeah, help this guy, please. Excellent! What about this? An obstacle? Well, sorry, before you got the guys, um... Guy's life got uh, saved by the, by the medics. On site. Need for medical assistance, uh... Drunk driver. It sounds ridiculous to say this, but ultimately it's like uh nine one one, what's your emergency? Hello? It's a time management game. Oh yeah, hi. I have a problem. I ordered a pizza and it's 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 too damn spicy. I have the time. Are you sure you've reached the right number? Damn sure. 
Are you in danger, but can't talk about it because there's someone in the room? What? No, no, I just want to get my money back. Uh, Fine. Yeah, I'm leaving at Slade. That's gonna be a 90 to one. Got it. Reporting. Affirmative. Copy that, guys. Over. What are the orders? Heading over there. Yeah, head on over there. Affirmative. Because this is uh, the speeding accident. Exclusively needs police. File. Waiting for on my way. Report. I copy. Get medics there immediately. What are the orders? On my way. On my way. Heading on my way. And firefighters. Thankfully, they are nearby. They're in a central spot, as far as city is concerned. Sharp tool entry, massive bloodlust. What are the orders? Oh boy, I don't, I don't have enough people. I don't have enough people to handle these emergencies. Uh, no, hold on. If you're heading back, are you heading back with these people? On my way to hospital. I know. If you need to help these people, we can just have them die. Reporting. Waiting for instructions. I'm listening. Heading over. Understood. I'm listening. The popo are going to be pretty useless here. I don't have enough doctors! I, I can't! Injured in hospital. Go there! There's a stroke symptoms observed. Hospitalization needed urgently. God damn it, do something! What do you mean we're done here? Wait, these people are under Suspect, enter house. Probably it's holster intentions. Need medical assistance, police intervention. Reporting. Affirmative. 911, what's your emergency? So, I've chopped my leg off. You've chopped off your leg? I, I, I held my cousin in the workshop, pushed wood with my leg and, put, and, and slipped into the press. I, I, I can't take it out. Please help. <sighs> okay. Where are you calling from? At Is your cousin with you? No, he went out for good. He'll he'll be back in the evening, but there there's no one here. There's no one around. God. You have something to tie around your leg. No, just just some tools and an axe and a hammer. All right, take off your shirt then. Well, that's no good. What? I want you to take off your shirt. Tear it up if necessary, and firmly tie it around your leg, just above your injury. Okay. <laughs> Done. Okay, keep calm. The ambulance is on the way. It'll be there in a few minutes. I think help is on its way <laughs> is more reassuring than calm down, than calming down. Good. I know this won't be easy, but I need you to calmly breathe. Relax. The ambulance will arrive soon. God, I... I, I, I think I'm passing out. No, you're not. Keep talking to me. Tell me, uh, do you have a girlfriend? Ah! Exactly! Yeah, yeah, I, I have a fiance. I'm glad we'll continue the conversation. We were, we we're gonna get married in two months. You are going to get married in two months. gonna be fine. I need you to stay awake. Please tell her that I loved her, okay, will you? Don't you still? If, if I pass away here, say that I thought about her. I beg you, you promise. But listen, you're gonna tell her yourself, okay? The ambulance is almost there. Road. Yeah, I'm leaving at Slade. That's gonna be a 9 one Trouble going for the other 10 -11. Wait, hold on. What are the orders? Ten four. We need medics over there, Jesus. What are the I copy. Go in there. Um the very least some first goddamn aid.
I can't remember what this situation is, but I have my medic sent elsewhere around the city. I just... Oh, that's great. That's just peachy. Help them if you can. Oh, this is the... oh right, of course. Lower right. These guys. I would like an overview of these guys. Are they... They're returning back, right? Yeah, that's usually... That's usually how you return. You return back. Come on, this guy has to be alive, right? How was I supposed to know that he'd be at the very goddamn edge of the map? He's still alive! <laughs> Give Oh god, heavy bleeding! Come on, guys! They might give him some basic first aid, but uh, unless unless medics get to him promptly, he's going to be done for. I'm not sending more medics his way, though. I will need them for other tasks. Am I over time? Yes, I am over time. This is the final task. Oh, okay, then. I mean, technically, I shouldn't... Uh, I shouldn't meta game like that. Well, he he is receiving help from these guys, from everyone except from the actual medics that he needs. He's getting a lot of reassurance, though. There are four people that are telling him to hang on. Come on, guys! Come on! Reach him, save him, help him. Is he gonna be fine? He's gonna be fine, right? Efficiency 95%, that's not bad. It's not bad whatsoever. Resolve plus 4, thank goodness. Robbery ignored! Awesome! Um... Why is there a last duty button? Well, frankly, I, I wanna click... Oh, right, that's the... No, it doesn't do anything. Huh. Fancy that. Oh yeah, last duty. Duty as in not the last task. But uh, while you were on duty, over here, everything you've done. And general information. <laughs> Which is going to be the same because um, I've only played once. <clears throat> So let me get this straight, you can just continue. Um, tutorial, hello, weren't you supposed to explain to me how this screen works, etc. Why would I not answer calls, by the way? I have some funds, so technically I could afford equipment. Intriguing, the field hospital apparently is a fire vehicle. I don't want to buy it. If I right click, will that, will that buy it? Because I don't want to buy it. And thankfully I cannot even afford it. I just like to read more about it. The field station can be set up by firemen to give first aid more efficiently. Okay, so that's firefighters efficiently giving first aid. The number of places is at zero. That's intriguing. So you cannot um, actually have anyone on board. Despite what the tutorial claimed. Reasonably enough. Oh no, sorry. Crew and places is separate. Places is how many people you can place on board. You can <laughs> could get your cops a bike. And I can afford to get them a bike. That's pretty much as much as I can afford. I could buy two bikes. No equipment, no vehicles. Just staff. 
Two police officers, two medics and two firefighters. That's it. Intriguing. But those are not the resources I have on hand. Because I have more resources. So these are the guys... I have at my disposal. <sighs> I have three police vehicles, two ambulances, two fire trucks. Including a single fire truck, a single technical truck. Uh, police cars, a single police van. The policemen, thankfully, have some firearms. That's good. Oh, oh, I see. What I have, I have on the left. What I can buy is on the right. So I have these people. I would like a new ambulance. I think a third ambulance would be very much appreciated. Can I afford one? How much would an ambulance be? 50,000. I barely cannot afford one. Medical transport. That's even. No, that's the same expense. So, why would you ever buy one instead of the other? Hold on, they're the same cost. They're both 50k. Except one has three spots and one has two spots. Am I missing something? They have the same speed, the same crew capacity. Why would you ever buy the ambulance over the medical transport? Makes no sense. The copter presumably is faster. There's no way I can... The only thing I can do is get a med bike. There are no spots on it, so I can't transport people to the hospital, but that's the fastest way for me to get a doctor on site. So if I want to desperately get another vehicle, that's the way to do it. I don't think that's the way to go, however. Uh, what's the driving stat on these people? Driving, 61, 66, fine. We need a better driver. Oh, this guy is awesome. Driving 92... 87. So let's get the 95 guy here, this guy here. No, I assume that the guy with the best driving skill is the one that counts in a given squad. I may be horribly wrong. Let's put two more police officers over here. Put one more medic on board over here. Since I, since I can't really afford additional vehicles, let's just deploy as is. This is fairly straightforward. I could form a new team, but I don't have spare vehicles to give them, so that would be utterly pointless. Let's spread them out a bit. Uh, let's have a unit of every single type in every single corner, effectively. Being very generous with the term corner here. So the firefighters will be up here, down there. Cops, down left, down right, up. And left, right for the medical teams. Let's do this. Oh, you can call in reinforce... Ah, it hasn't occurred to me, of course, when I needed more people. I should have called in reinforcements. Now let's see those buttons right now. These are the crews I have. Reinforcements I can call in. can call in the National Guard, but that's uh, ill-advised. Can 
be done though. In case of emergency. For 30k I can call a cop. I'm not sure that's the way to go. It's pretty much definitely not the way to go. For 5k I can call an additional ambulance. If I desperately need to, I will call in reinforcements. Received an information about an incident. It needs searching. Reporting right away. What are the orders? Affirmative. Reporting. Understood. 13 King 84. 113 Lieutenant. Suspect caused an accident, left the scene. Uh, hit and run. Suspect is escaping. Cold name. Okay. Waiting. Understood. Alright, thank you. Waiting, heading over. Waiting. Understood. Alright, let's send them over. The team automatically starts the search. But can I do this manually? Alternatively, you can manually send units. It's faster, but uh, also. We're engaging. Take one of the sectors, okay. Go on over there. Search is being continued as long as the vehicle stays in the sector. Excellent. As they f finish the search, the missing object wasn't found. Proceed to another sector. Continue the search. We found the object. You will now automatically approach and solve the report. Stop right there, criminal scum. Okay. A car was reported speeding. Stop this man. Take this call. You stay centered. Oh, dude. There are very few ways you can go here, and you're not going to disappear off our radar. So, you're done for. Well, lady. What? Hello? What's your emergency? Hello? I need help. It's burning. I'm sorry, ma'am. What's burning? It's burning. Send in the fire brigade immediately, please. Where are you? Ma'am, where are you? Okay, I'm sending the fire department. Well, I'm waiting. If there's any FTO, reporting. Heading over there. One thirteen, Lieutenant. At ten eleven on one sixteen fifty two, Sutton. Allayed, really? Yeah, I'm leaving. Allayed. That's gonna be a nine minute loss. Trouble going to standing by. We're well done here. Excellent. Just stay there. Medics. What are you ten for? Carbon monoxide poisoning. Ah, damn it. We need those carbon monoxide detectors. How's that overdose? Help those junkies. There's a man putting a needle in his arm. Oh, okay, buddy. You'll not be putting anything in your arm anymore. Alright. Let's send the medical brigade over. A party in the neighborhood is too loud. Drugs are likely being used. Well... Heading over there. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, I need some help. What's the problem, little guy? Where's my mask? With your mask? I have to do it. Will you help me? No, I can't do that, but I can send someone else to help you. Okay, um... Is your mum or dad nearby? Parents, contact parents. Can you ask your mum to come on the phone? Mom! Come on the phone! Mom! Also, what are you doing? The policeman is helping me with math. What did I tell you about staying on the phone? But I need help. You saw me call for me. Yeah, but I didn't mean the police. Hello? I'm sorry. 
No problem, ma'am. Is everything all right there? The second game is Bulletstone by People Can Fly, a gratuitously outrageous first-person shooter. If you're a good kid, you should probably disable it now. Don't worry, you can always change it back in the game options later. Do you wish to play the game with mature language on? Yes, please. Beware! Bulletstone contains gallons of blood and mountains of guts! Those make you feel bad inside, you can disable them now. If you want to turn the sick stuff back on, you can do it in the op in the game options. Do you wish to play the game with blood and gall on? Yes. Okay, very easy. Only meant for players competing to shoot as other grandmas. Easy, ideal for players who'd like to breeze through the game easily. Normal. Will people who have played shooters before? Expert. Will gamers want a challenge? Very hard. Sorry, that's not expert, that's hard. I can't read, apparently. Very hard. This is only for the hardcore. If this is your first time playing, we recommend another difficulty mode. Oh, so this is the difficulty for me, then. This is a modern game. There's no goddamn way they're going to nail me with the highest difficulty level. Said Vestin. Promptly failing. Outside confederate jurisdiction. Calm down. You got this all wrong. Just, just listen to me. Here, have another drink, Gray. It'll help your aim. Please, please. Here, use my die. gun. I keep the sight a few inches left to target. Mm, nice. Challenge yourself. Look, the sooner you answer our questions, the better the odds we don't miss a bottle. Evaporate your face. Okay, stop! Stop! Okay, please! I'll tell you, I'll tell you whatever you want, okay? Whatever, whatever you want to know. Whatever you want to know. What's the bounty on our heads? You, you worth a half a billion per. Doubled after you raided that Confederate supply liner. <laughs> Serrano himself put out the mark. Half a billion? Not bad. Maybe for you. I am worth twice that. Well now, I appreciate you being honest with us. Uh, no, hey, 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 what the fuck, man? I, I, I told you everything! Yeah, but you tried to kill us, see? Telling us why doesn't earn you a reprieve. I mean, he's got a good point here. Um, can I actually shoot the bottle? Can I shoot the bottle? You're gonna vent him? Hey, third bounty hunter this week. Rano was stroking one hell of a murder boner, man. Let's go loot a few Confederate ships. Earn our bounty. You can run so fast! You don't have to go fast, but it helps. I'm sorry, I had an objective. <laughs> Can you please? Thank you. Oh, dude. Damn it. Just wonderful. Can I actually not open any of these? Hold on, this is the reload button. Oh, cocksucker. Um... Can I actually do anything in these circumstances? I don't think that's how... Any of this works, but okay. Left, right, left, right, and reload. You searched him. Don't delegate important things to the intoxicated. But my protagonist is also intoxicated. Uh, you know what? Never mind. Yes, never delegate. This guy is completely incompetent, and frankly, should be glad I didn't shoot him in the face for that. Um, don't mind my bindings either. Fuck. 
Is it just any old thing you touch crumbles into dog shit? Your mom survived. <laughs> Barely. Guess I know how the old gal got that limp. Yep. I need to tell you you need to crouch here. It'd be nice. Oh, show me you care. It's not a toggle, apparently. I, I can set it to be a toggle. I'm not sure if I want to. Well, hauling it is annoying. Yeah, I don't know. I'll figure it out later. You boys are... What? Door stuck on something. Step aside, Doc. I'll deal with it my way. Are we about to blow it up? Oh, for... So, which one of you shitheads left an over grenade on the bounty hunter? Ray, we're compromised here. I'm warping. Go for it. I'll be right up. Any booze left on this ship? Nope. But there is paint thinner in the storage bay. Ray, we've got trouble. I need you deck side now. All space to run. Of course, we're going to run around first when we want to miss all the. Magnificent stuff lying around that I might potentially interact with or might be able to pick up. Uh, what the hell am I kidding? This is the tutorial section of the game. There's presumably nothing to find here. Nothing whatsoever. It's wasting everyone's time. Attention, everybody, Captain on deck. <laughs> I was following leads on Confederate supply liners. Came out of warp and it was just there. What was? The Ulysses. I'm getting us out of here. Warping to a dark matter field. Try and lay no, low until. We're not going anywhere. What do you mean we're not going anywhere? That's the Confederation's prize warbird. General Serrano will be on board. And we want to get on. Christmas come early, boys. We got us some mass murder and piece of shit out there waiting on us to deliver some reparation. We're with you, Gray. Serrano hung us all out to dry. I ain't dry no more. No, you're drunk again. That's correct. You won't last 15 seconds. That. You've lost your nerve, Ishii. I honor my oath to serve you despite your recklessness. But this. I will not die for your revenge, Gray. Our revenge. Ulysses wants to open a communication channel. <laughs> Arm forward cannons. They'll get the message. Wow, we're not even going to try to. You want to mutiny? Parley. the time. No takers. Then fire. Come on. Let's make Serrano wish he triple that bounty. I mean, maybe he's got a point. Maybe. Presumably I'm supposed to aim where I'm shown to aim, but... No, oh, I understand, I understand. I understand what I'm doing wrong. Well... This is a ludicrous proposition, and I- WHOA! Awesome! He's showing you something, alright. Oh, this is- This ain't good! He saved my life. Ishi. Okay. Fine. He died for your revenge, dude. We're all dead men anyway. Dead for years now. Well, just needed to do this one last thing. Just had to make sure we didn't go to hell alone, General. Are we? Gonna take you. Take every motherfucking last one of you with us. Is that the self-destruct button? Plunge in the sullen swell. 
ten fathoms deep on the road to hell. There's no way he's going to survive this is well because he's about to ram that flagship A few years earlier! Thank you! <laughs> Your fancy new gravity boots make assassination time fun, Doc! Glad you like them. One should take no joy in killing. We are soldiers, not assassins. So what, you just maybe need like a softer title, Ishii? Is that it? How about, uh, Disagreeable Person's Disposal Unit? You're pushing me, Rel. No, nope. but if I was gonna, this'd be the place to do it. Where are we going? And why? Is it gonna be there? What a ludicrous situation. We're walking down a building. Do we crouch here and walk under the... Did I seriously get lost? In a building. Oh, sorry. Um, that's a call on the mission, man. Skippy Granola's groovy dream catchers picking up some boomer vibes. <sighs> okay. This seems straightforward enough. Done! Okay, where are we going now? Why are we even here? Shouldn't we leave? We should leave. I feel like we should leave. Serrano wants explosives on that computer. Watch the clock. When's the pickup? Don't sweat it, boss. We're on schedule. Okay, I get it. What the fuck? I told you to rig these to blow, not check your goddamn email. What are you doing on here? What am I looking at? Every hit we've done. We've been killing innocent people. Novak was a reporter. Just finished an article on Serrano's corruption. Get Serrano on the line. Serrano betrayed us. General Serrano, I have a- What are you calling me for, ass maggot? Are you calling me from the job site? You ignorant piece of- Shut shit. the fuck up! Answer me a question. These people. Have you had us killing innocent civilians? What in the name of sweet Mary Mother of Christmas did you think you were doing out there all this time? You namby-pamby cocksucks are Confederate sanctioned assassins! You told us the targets were gun runners, slave traders, mass murderers. Yeah! I love you! <laughs> so what? Whoa! Did we just kill? Novak held incriminating evidence against you, sloppy shitheads. You killed him to cover up what you do. And what exactly do we do? You serve proudly at the pleasure of a general of this confederation that you love with such a fervor you would gleefully sacrifice your mega dickless life on my say so to keep her safe. Your commanders happy and your government's sovereignty strong. Now, you festering assholes! Either make with one sweet and sloppy apology, or I will fuck up your lives! I am gonna kill you! That's it! Hey 
man, what the fuck? That was a giant group decision you just made for us. True. Okay, we'll get to the Spectre. Jump to the side systems. Outside Confederate jurisdiction. I don't think we're gonna get off this planet, Grayson. Well, we'd better think of something. We'd better think of something very, very quickly. Otherwise, uh, there's impending doom on the other side of the... Oh my god. That's not what I call impending doom. It's okay. It's okay. We're not going to hurt you. You're going to be fine. You might die because of the acts of compassion. Ishii, stay with what the? Hold your ground. Go down fighting. Woo! You guys shooting? I can't tell. You know? Where's the little girl? Ah, oh, Jesus. Things are getting fun. Come on, Gray. You're letting me do all the killing. Oh, sweet logos. Ishisano. You're famous where I come from. Gonna make me famous killing you. Ishi! Dio! Run, kid! Get to the elevator, go down, and get to the top! She's dying, man. He's all fucked up. You see that? Escape pods from Ulysses. I see him crashing down. What about it? It doesn't matter, man. Get your head out of your ass. I need your help here. This is not the this is the present. Whoa. We crashed on the planet, right? That's just the back. This is quite spectacular, if I may say so myself. Come on, dude. Don't you die on me. Easy. No. Oh, damn it. Snap out of it. Quickly. Get into the infirmary. This guy's gonna live. Gonna just go. Took a bullet for him. I'm not gonna let him die now. He's been the most upstanding guy of us all, as far as I can tell. The most honorable of the bunch. Possibly the most decent human being I've ever known. How did we even survive ramming that thing after getting almost entirely blown to bits? Getting the hell off the ship. You're not leaving Ishii. Not if there's any chance we can save him. Okay, okay. If Doc thinks we can do something. I need you to fix it, Doc. All those cyber patch jobs you did on the field. There I must be. Place fingers and bones. But look at him, Cray. Half his body is crushed. At least try. He'd do it for any one of us. True. Maybe, maybe I could. But I'd need a charged fusion cell to power the bio well. Where can I find one? Been out of them for months, Doc. Damn it! There's gotta be another way. Ulysses escape capsules. A, a few jettisoned. Wait a minute. Engines will have cells. Yes, sirree. Okay. We get a capsule. Let's go, Rel. Our boy's time is short. Just keep him alive. Be right back. Get a power cell and crash capsules. I'm gonna be candid with you, Chief. Made a bad call. Yeah, I know. What else is new? Wait. You hear that? Loud goddamn banging? Yeah! Ah! Whoa! What do you mean take cover? My own personal rabbit's foot, boss. Rainbows, puppies, and lucky fucking clovers spew from your ass. Shut up! Come on, the other exit. Whoa! Can I, uh, is the friendly file kicking in this game? Uh, 
Well, this is a terrible way to spend an afternoon. Come on, keep moving. You picked a real piece of a world to crash on, boss. Running interference, Doc. Killing as fast as we can. Dude, what are you? Faster, idiot. Get the work done. Let's go. Holy crap! Holy. Wow! I mean, that's a that's a. Took that bastard down with us. We did. Hide! Whoa! Cover! Presumably you can regen health when you're behind cover, right? Obviously. Any ammo issues? Or can you essentially fire up a bullet storm? The heart isn't really an obtrusive element. Serrano's new squad. That clown. Oh boy. Oh, he doesn't like the locals either. These guys are really dumb. No, don't tell me he's gonna kick the. Aww. Bad luck, bad luck, though, buddy. Final echo, elite. Don't look too elite now, does he? Rumors were true. Final echo are using leashes. I thought instinct moderated weapons were outlaw. Yeah, they were. Let's try it out. Oh, that's painful for me. You know, said detector, resetting combat stats. Damn, I can actually feel this thing talking to me. Oh, super boss, real happy for you. Open the hood on this pod. No problem. Hot damn. Anything I can find around here? Those fusion cells. Oh, right, thanks. I'm just a waterhead. I forgot why I done marched out here. Dude. Less wise cracking. More life saving, please. Oh, don't tell me we can climb up the. Oh, no. We can't make the jump. We we don't have the upper body strength to climb that. We'll have to go around, I guess. True. Look at us go! This is this is amazing. Well, this is bad. On to the spikes you go. When will you stop? No one does know. By the way, collapse the burial by killing people, of course. Leash that out of the way. Out of range, well, fair enough. Well, onto the spikes you go, fair enough. Well, steady though, steady though, stop shooting me. Don't kick me, that's what I do to you! We don't operate on... Kantian... Principles here. No categorical imperative for you!
This is incredible. And again, that's what happens when they play games that are a tad too retro. I'm all out of blood packs. One more minute, he's gone. You hear me? We're here. Hold tight. Ishii's lucky I got so much love for him. Not many other folks I'd do this for. Doc, I'll fix him, Rel. You'll see. Well, we're here. Hurry, plug it in. Now get out. We've got to buy well millions of neurotransmitters. Get. All right, all right. We'll leave you to it, Doc. Procedure in progress. Sterilization. Sound of it. They're almost in. Doc, you gotta hurry. We might be looking at visitors. You in the room. Get up. Can we open the door? No! Boss, they're coming through the vents. Shit! We gotta cover Ishi, man. Come on! How? How the fuck did I get them? Give me something worth dying for. Pressure lost. See some fight, you savage cocksuckers! Hey! Don't play why you guys! Was that meant to happen? Yeah, you don't fight. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, 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 not like this. Doc. Good serving with you, boss. Shoot me. Do it! No! Processor. You're gonna have trouble getting used to it, but uh, it, it, it's it's like an amputation. I'm gonna help you, okay? You, you are going to help me. I am having a difficult time seeing how you can help me. Your drunken thirst for revenge just killed our crew. I'm. I'm sorry. You're sorry. You're sorry. Ishi, listen to me. The bioprocessor. You can't let it take control. You just can't let that happen. I'm going to kill you, Gray. I see no logical reason not to. That is a final echo instinct leash. Yeah. So what? The communication line. Open it. Mute the mic. Even if you don't want to assassinate that son of a whore, if he's here, rescue jump ships will be here soon. Process that chance of survival. Can you track the woman? Yeah, got it. We find that broad. We can track her to Serrano and use the general to get off world. Killing him is counterproductive. I know how important it is for you to help me. 
The third game is Butcher by Transhuman Design, a brutal, gory, vertical 2D shooter. Okay, you start out, and despite the fact that you allegedly have 66.6% health, it's displayed as 100, because it's 100% of what you can possibly have. I really need to remember that for space to open stuff. As you might imagine, it's a somewhat bizarre configuration. Can't wall jump? That's fine by me. Um... Slice and dice. Is that okay? Whoa! Well, I'm still alive. I passed calibration. Fine, let's head on down. I've managed. I've discovered no secrets, but then again, there were none to discover. This is a chainsaw, this is a shotgun. These are the shotgun shells. Uh, smoke flow, nominal. You can't really shoot through walls, but no. Armed humans! Right. It doesn't seem terribly armed, but fair enough. What is that? An assault rifle. Well, they're up though. I need to gain access to them, and I will soon enough. Oh boy. You stop that! Let's use the assault rifle, if possible. It's important to funnel them through tight corridors. It's the best way to do it. Let him shoot into a wall or something. Yeah, when that guy goes, didn't expect him to appear about whatever, whatever. Oh no. I've lost some ammo. There's nothing to gather over here. The 
this seems laggy for some ungodly reason. I don't know why. Possibly because it's just uh, 60 frames per second, which I guess to me feels low. That's number two. Oh, am I discovering the secrets? I don't think I'm discovering the secrets. Can I slice him through the wall? I can melee him through the wall, I guess. Come here! Let's try to reach this guy. Uh, he's too far, fine. It's one thing I can do and that's the one thing I will do. Push the button. Oh boy! Whoa! All right. I guess there are um, difficulties at times. Is there anything of interest over here? On the hooks? Anything over here? You can destroy the lights, if you so desire. It's not of much use, but you can do that. What is that? Oh right, that's three people. Clumped up together, they look weird. Wow! Where are all those secrets? Let's use the assault rifle judiciously. Of course, the key is whoa. To use short controlled bursts, that's not what I'm doing. Down the jetpack guy goes. Let's go to the shotgun ammo and uh, get the hell out of dodge, I guess. That's a decent bit of ammo for the assault rifle and the shotgun. I of course have infinite ammo for the chainsaw.
Oh boy. The hazards are quite deadly. Well, let's use caution. Whoa! Hey, just keep yelling. What? They just keep screaming. Look at this monstrous spider's saw thing. Eesh. Okay, that's uh, highly gruesome. Is there any benefit to me going down here? Any benefit whatsoever? Or do I just die? Because there are secrets to collect, also I've heard. Oh look! They're grabbing onto one another, like, yeah, so hanging by the rent trails, that's also a remote possibility. It's not like I want to go into the incinerator, I think. Let's leave things well enough alone. I appreciate the additional ammunition. Presumably this place harbors some dark and horrible secrets that I may uncover. Place, do you harbor any secrets? I could just presumably leave and go to the next level. Presumably, who the hell knows. I'm trying to click things but nothing is happening. Apparently being there is not the smi smartest of ideas, so let's leave. Have I missed the secrets? No, there were no secrets. Fair enough. I should have used it as a speedrun instead, but... Um, I did not do so. Okay, I have the shotgun, the assault rifle and the chainsaw. Of course, I could traditionally hump walls and try to find anything I may possibly be able to find over here. I have not read the backstory of this, so I'm not quite sure what the motivation of my protagonist here is. And again, perhaps there isn't that much to find. Let's press the button. That's what I, my protagonist would want, right? He wants to press buttons. Whoa. Whoa! You stopped that, right? Oh, 10 HP. Well, that's lovely. Are they invisible? Nope! Whoa. Whoa. I'm switching to the assault rifle and uh, using caution. Whoa. Oh boy. Gotta keep on moving! Oh 
one burial unlocked. Well, that's progress. No! Oh, those guys are terrifying. Well, that's the final stage for the one. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I could call them the chainsaw-wielding lunatics, but then again... Who am I in this scenario, exactly? Whoa! Well, this game is not pulling any punches. Okay, let's try to keep the sense and shoot. Jesus. I'm sorry, but in-depth commentary will simply be next to impossible in these circumstances. This just requires... Oh! This effectively requires all of my attention! It's absolutely unforgivingly brutal! Oh goodness! Remember, short controlled bus. Sweet logos. I need to distinguish between people spawning and uh, animals spawning. And down I go. So trifle. Right side here. Take this up, pick all of that up. Switch to shotgun. Yeah, I was Whoa! Wondering where are my medkits? There are no medkits, I turned them off. Oh no, oh no, here they come. <sighs> Playing pro well? I'm sorry, what? Uh, yeah, this, this thing, flamethrower. 
Whoa! Yeah, it's predictably enough it's stuff and vile. It certainly does. My goodness. Well, let's hope I don't miss any secrets on this level. I did set myself up for failure to a certain extent by picking the highest difficulty level before I had any clue what was going on. But at the same time, flying by the seat of my pants, I am somehow handling it. Oh, that ain't good. Can I chainsaw the world? Can I activate the world? Is there anything I can do? If I drop here, do I die? Well, I'm about to find out. Uh, apparently that's not handy whatsoever. Fine, let's head to the docks. That's presumably the exit. Yes, that's the end of the level. There's a patient general AI. Welcome drone. Purge of falls. Set target main call. Dark Space Station FF0411. Yeah, I'm a machine, a killing machine, and my job is to destroy humanity, presumably. That's the way I see it. Oh, great. Five shotgun shots and the chainsaw. That's not a lot. Not a lot whatsoever. We need to pay attention to skulls, secrets, and other such things. If they are even to be found anywhere. You don't open the door here. Presumably you jump down here and something happens! Was that good? I teleported, right? Yeah, that's a teleport. <laughs> of course it is. Let's open the door. As soon as they are close enough. As soon as I want. But not a moment sooner. How much stuff can be demolished? Whoa! No! That's what I get for being too obsessed with destruction. Of course, I am not going to find any medkits because I turned them off. But perhaps I'll find some ammo in these crates. Spamming ammo is the next best best thing. To being actually able to heal. I guess health in that context is a bit of an invariant. Well, it's not quite an invariant, but on the contrary, if it was an invariant, it would not be a cause for concern. But rather, the health I start with is the maximum I can ever hope for. That's the most I will ever have. Oh, look, a skull. So I need to cherish. You found a secret. One out of two. I need to cherish it. I need to preserve it at all costs. 
There's a skull over there. Want to reach it. If you fall all the way down here, do you actually get something for your trouble? Or well, presumably a fiery death, but anything aside from that. That was the chainsaw, that was not the shotgun! Let's slay all of them first. Commodity very difficult to come by. That's what I need to keep in mind. Just need to aim the tiniest of bits and it'll all be fine. Of course, this is um, utterly gratuitous. There's nothing beneficial in this to me, other than the shield mayhem of destroying boxes. Which I do find satisfactory. Surprisingly enough. I do not just revel in the slaughter, I also take pleasure in box smashing. How do I reach that skull? Oh right, of course. Need to remember... Ugh. Let's... Ah, uh, yeah, the pressing buttons may have dire consequences. Okay, I'll get to the bottom of this, fine. Whoa! Okay, I know how to beat this level, I just need to execute it properly. I'll get back here. There we go. That was somewhat painful. Yeah, whatever, dude. Need to push the button. Which opens the door over here, as far as I remember. No, it doesn't. Why? How? Something has gone bizarrely wrong. I'm not quite sure how you are supposed to do it then. Because I remember this... Oh, you go through here. Fair enough. Uh, you, you can pick up the second skull if you have to, but... Since the second skull is gone, because I picked it up earlier, I can pick it up again. Managed to kill that final guy over here. And with all the kills, both the skulls, I'm ready to leave the level. That was, um, something, wasn't it? Game number 4 is Earth 2140 by a studio currently known as Reality Pump. It is a real-time strategy. What's the Eurasian dynasty? Let's go with the United Civilized States. Unadvanced. I can handle it. Alright, 
Excellent, we get something loaded onto this. We will destroy the ED base. A world for Earth resources will now begin. Whoever wins this will rule the Earth. But now to your mission. <laughs> but you don't need to hear that, that's just a big picture. Uh, we've started construction of a new base in Arizona. My... Mm, in Arizona. However, the ED managed to put several units into this sector. These units were successful in the attempt to take over and destroy the base. Search and destroy all ED units in this sector to enable us to rebuild the base. Lovely, lovely. So you started the construction. And you did not have sufficient defenses to actually protect it. So they just got to destroy the base. And now my task is to get in there, destroy them and we will restart... Construction, presumably, well, perhaps not from scratch. Maybe next time we ought to have a bit more foresight and actually prevent these things from happening in the first place instead of... <sighs> when you face the enemy, you'll be able to try out a new prototype of Tiger Hellmaker. You'll definitely enjoy this heavy battle unit. But how is... Look, from what I've heard... The UCS is a stochastocracy, meaning that people get <laughs> into power randomly since no one cares. <laughs> because people are not particularly interested in politics, they just uh, spend their lives on leisure. And everything ultimately is taken care of by the central computer. If I'm the central computer, presumably that's not what I'm getting. If I'm not the central computer, am I just a random schmuck who's in charge? Possibly. <laughs> oh, look, you can pan to the left and pan to the right. Uh, what is the exact benefit of that? Presumably none, but hey, this is emphatically a 3D environment. Don't you get the wrong impression? It's all 3D, right? Or is it? I don't know, either way. Look, is the base. And the base then got destroyed. Thus... Ready. Order. Moving out. Order. Yes. Thus... Order. I will really keep messing up horribly and repeatedly because Ready. I'm used to left-click being select and right-click being move. Whereas in this game, uh, left click is select, left click is move, um, yes. right click is deselect. Yes. Meaning that you left click and then you left click. So you can click after you click. And you just deselect with the right click, which is um, not necessarily terribly Order. useful. Intriguing, because ordinarily you just um, left-click on nothing to deselect in most games. But no, not over here. Thankfully, you have control groups. I'll just be... Attack moving these units. I was hesitant to use the term, because... Um, I'm not sure that's necessarily how this works. You have a separate attack button, and I'm not sure if you have to stop them before they start attacking of their own accord. I'm not sure to what degree you have to micromanage them. Thankfully, the pathfinding seems... Um, ...acceptable. Units do not get stuck, do not meander hopelessly and endlessly, so there's that. I think you might have to click on the enemy units for your units to actually do something moderately useful. What is this? Can we get in on something? Ready. Nope, it has to be destroyed. Ready. Okay. Down you go then. Because maybe that was an empty transporter or something. Now... Uh, I really don't want to be negative. After all, this was supposed to be a celebration of all, all things Polish, but at the same time, I might have chosen this title somewhat um, unfortunately. 
It is a fairly old one. It's literally the first game the studio has ever made. They're now called Reality Pump. Back in the day, they were just um, Techland's um, software division called Techland, Techland Program, I believe. Either way, they're a decent studio, but this is an RTS. They're difficult to make. Especially if it's your first project ever. It's ambitious. Ambitious as hell. And this was back in the day. We didn't quite have um, the standards that we do now. We have certain expectations as far as RTSs are concerned. And when those expectations are not met, disappointment tends to reign supreme. For instance, uh, we expect control groups, and we get control groups here. Thank goodness we get control groups. We also expect hotkeys. You don't get as many over here. Aside from, you know, the control groups I have just mentioned. However, something that I find pretty much utterly inexcusable is what they have done to the UI over here. Look how they massacred my boy. Now, you might think that the textures have not loaded or something, but no, this is it. I've checked the manual. These buttons have no labels. Well, how then are you supposed to operate them? Well, you have shortcuts for these, thankfully. Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 3, Alt 4. So you can switch between them. But first of all, in most sane RTS games, you don't have to switch between tabs like that. Or if you do, you it's done seamlessly, contextually. You click on a thing, the tabs get switched. But uh, to not even have the tabs labeled is utterly bizarre. What's good about this game, though, is the music. I really appreciate that aspect of it. Oh boy, is this one guy... Eh, just got obliterated. I think we've pretty much explored this corner, so we just need to head to the actual base's location. And we'll be utterly done with the mission. Presumably that's it. Is it it? Nope, it's not. That'll be it. What? That's... You have got to be kidding me. Um... You don't pause the game when I'm reading... Okay, never mind. Constructive... I'll just take my sweet time. Well, hopefully this doesn't... Hopefully, time is not of the essence. Construct the following. Power station, research center, construction center, heavy tech, plan drop. Construct things. Okay. Well, first and foremost, Ready? let's select these units and explore the tiniest of bits so that I know where the hell I am. I'm not about to... Oh, look, more units. I'm not about to blindly expand. Well, you know, um, blindly place my base. I'm not sure we could even call that expanding, considering the fact that it's the first base I am to establish. Rock and roll, guys, rock and roll. Whoa, boy! Now, of course, despite this being the highest difficulty level, this is fairly straightforward, nonetheless. I'm not sure you can actually repel units in this game. I know that you can repel buildings. You can also regenerate biological units for the opposing faction, for the Eurasian Dynasty! I really want to reach my base so that I can defend it. Perhaps I ought to establish it before attempting to defend it, however. But you can see my point, right? I would like to look I would like to move my troops to where my base is supposed to be. Presumably these troops can reach it, the other ones cannot. Not easily at the very least. To place a mine somewhere, you need to have resources available though. Thus, 
it would be prudent to locate the resources first so you don't have to place the mine far away from the base proper. I might be forced to just plop the base down over there without thinking too much about it, but once again, I would really prefer to position it strategically, at least to some tiny extent. Oh, you double click the group's number and you don't zoom into that place. Well, thankfully you at least selected. Once again, I don't want to be overly negative, but what the hell. Yeah, I don't want to be overly negative. I don't want to say that this really is a, a Paul Men's Command and Conquer. Which arguably in my mind is a Paul Men's Starcraft. But at the same time, the similarities are quite striking. Mostly because it's a matter of the times. It's not like they knew any better at that point in time. Thankfully, you can place orders on the minimap, so you can order them to move to a particular grid point, and they will. Move them over here. I believe that is about it. There's really not much else left on the map, so now I can proceed <laughs> with um, the construction. Okay, stop now, please. <sighs> there we go. You get a base out of that. Nice little pyramid. Oh, I'm sorry, the pyramid is just a... The building during construction. You can depower the buildings and you can build extensions. You, every single building also has the self destruct option, which uh, is pretty ridiculous. I built the Bantha, that's lovely, but what I really need is the power plant. This Bantha is supposed to extract resources from mines. I don't really. Ah, yes, this is the universal construction building I guess when you get a when you construct a new building you actually construct a vehicle that turns into that building so in a fairly straightforward fashion you can then move that vehicle to where you want to place the building and then the building gets placed I like this Once again, the music is quite nice and soothing. Let's not self-destruct this. Instead, let's try to build additional add-ons. First and foremost, what was I even supposed to do in this mission again? Construct the following. A power station. A research center. A construction center. A heavy tech plant. Robot factory. Refinery and two mines. That's a lot of stuff. But effectively, two of each plus... Sorry, one of each plus two mines. The robot factory process infantry units. The a heavy tech plant gives you what essentially amounts to... Mech units. So you get bio and you get mech. How about that mine of mine? Here's the mine, and now I have to figure out the exact spot where I can place it. It can only be placed on resources, but how exactly am I supposed to be able to tell that a given spot is a spot? That's, uh, <laughs> resourceful, so to speak. What do the resources look like, exactly? Game, will you help me in any fashion? No? Is this a good spot for a mine? Well, I don't know. What? Out. 
It appears to be, because this is partially covered. Now, the question I have is... How exactly was I supposed to be able to tell? Was I supposed to be able to tell? To begin with? Let's place the mine here. Can you place it anywhere? I genuinely do not know. Now, I want to get the mines first because I want to start getting that cash flow. I cannot construct a mine over here. Perhaps it has to be a certain distance away from the main base. I do not know. Is this far enough? No, this is wrong. But why? I am as clueless as I was originally. And I have read the manual. You can only place these um, next to resources. What does that mean exactly? Are these resources? Are these resource nodes? Next to which I am supposed to place my mine? Can I place it next to a cliffside? Is this resource rich? No, it's not. Can I place it over there? Why am I not extracting anything? Bantha, you go over here. Pick stuff up and bring it back. Just dump it over. Well, do you dump it? Actually, no, no, you pick it up. And then you dump it... Well? Perhaps it's something you have to construct. This center power plant or for presumably a refinery. If I run out of money, I am going to be quite pissed. Yes. Production this is not a good spot, apparently. Ready. This is really soothing. Move away from the power plant. Yeah, apparently you can't clump buildings up. That's not good. <laughs> to put it mildly. You usually want to clump your buildings up. It's good for you. You dump the resources at the factory. Excellent. Now, let me find a spot where I can construct the second mine. This is hell. How am I supposed to be able to tell? I can see it on the map right now. There are resources there. Can I place the second mine next to the first mine of mine? Are these resources? I like my resources blatant. I like to see my Vespin gas and my minerals. I don't think I'm being terribly picky here. This is a resource-filled spot, but I cannot construct here. Is this okay? This is not okay. That just won't do. See my dilemma here. I'll just keep on driving. Thankfully, I'm gonna get a cash. Presumably, I should continue constructing. Uh, do I have the heavy tech? Presumably not. It went Bantha, a mine, a refinery, a power plant. Let's build a research center. It's not like I necessarily can even get away with this. <laughs> Though I was supposed to construct a second mine. Does this count? Is the mine building enough of a mine for this game? Yes. Or is it not? Alright, let's move you whatever the hell you are. A research center. So you have to switch tabs. 
you can't possibly see your construction tab and your and your unit tab at the same time. We just can't afford to do so. Apparently, inconceivable. And you know, it wouldn't necessarily even be that bad if you automatically switched away from your production queue onto the unit tab once you selected a unit. And I'm just going to be whinging this entire playthrough. I am! And there's nothing you can do to stop me. I have high standards. I've played StarCraft in my life. I know that it can get better than this. I know what RTS games can be like. Now, I, pr I appreciate this bizarre waypoint system. Accor uh, according to which you can pre-select a path for your... Vehicles and infantry to follow. So you can select up to eight commands that then get executed in order. And then get looped around. It's pretty magnificent, but I think those are the resources. It's pretty magnificent that you can do that, although I see the utility of that as, uh, well, fairly minimal. Why would you really ever want to do that? I can see... Those are not resources. Well, I don't know how you are supposed to be able to tell. Oh, you right-click, you get some info. Fair enough. I understand that you might want to queue commands. So that you don't have to worry about a particular unit. The only sort of thing that I can see as even moderately useful is the ability to, say, have your units patrol an area. Fair enough. But if you actually need to patrol an area, then presumably you won't necessarily even be able to afford the time to send them out on that patrol route. This is the only place that I know has the resources. See, I can solve this problem, but I'm not sure I genuinely want to. Because the solution to this problem... ...is not a particularly um, pleasant one. Namely, the solution to this problem is to self-destruct this mine and build two mines side by side over here. In the only spot I know that yields resources. Oh, right, of course, I have to switch to the production tab. I kept wondering. Uh. Oh, mine of mine. And you'd think that the ability to select these things individually would give you some useful granularity. You'd be mostly wrong. What exactly are you supposed to do at the power plant? There's pretty much nothing to do. You can turn it off, you can select it, which you pretty much already have, and you can blow it up. Okay, maybe you have some units within that you can then unload from the building. Big deal. Fair enough, you can also do that, if you so desire. But other than that, pretty much the only useful buildings are... Well, there's a very limited number of useful buildings in this game. That you might actually want to select. I figured the research center would be useful. What is it, by the way? When I speak of the devil. If you want to select a building, you just click it on the map. There we go, it's selected. This is the research center. Can it do anything useful? You right-click it to get this screen. Well, you can once again click to select it. I already had it selected. You can unpower it. I might as well do so from this screen, but thanks for... I guess, um, giving me the option to. Do you need more scientists over here? Does it help to any extent? I don't know. All I know is that uh, there's a guy there and hopefully he's doing something useful. I honestly <laughs> wouldn't be able to tell. Don't tell me that this is the only spot I have. If that's the only viable spot, and I spend and I spend the entire recording looking for a viable spot for my mine, I'm going to be a tad miffed. 
And presumably, so will you! How do I construct things? Oh yeah, I have to click on this goddamn thing again. No, but I wanted to look up the objective! Right, so that's briefing. Construct the power station. Done. Research station. Done. Construction center. I don't have that. Heavy tech plant. Nope. Robot factory. I have a refinery. I have a problem with the two mines. Okay, construction center. Heavy and robot. Switch away from the tab. Heavy tech. Completed. Robot factory. <sighs> mine of mine. Just <sighs> unleash that upon us. Place yourself wherever. I don't particularly care, really. Heavy tech, I can build the T100s, the ATM 500s, I can build a bike, I don't care. I just want to build a mine, you know. Second mine, that's what I want. Can we please? No, we can't. Was this always marked as yellow or did you have to discover? The area switch and resources. Well, thank goodness! Well, anyway, I have the robot factory and the heavy tech. Now I just need the construction center. I know. Oh, right, well, no, no. Sorry, the construction center is the one that constructs things. Did I skip the second briefing by accident? As you probably know, we have successfully stormed ED headquarters and copied the important data onto our computers. Well,. I didn't know that, but thanks for telling me. However, the self-destruct activated before we could decode all of it. That's okay. We're now pretty well informed, but the ED will change these plans ASAP. Understandable. ED scouts have penetrated our continent. Search and destroy. We'll keep you posted. Great. I feel like a goddamn postcard already. You can still look to the left and to the right. Does this please you? Does this change to any extent? Perhaps more and more stuff gets constructed around you over here. I don't know. You were saying, oh, units of mine? No! No, hold on, stop, 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 stop. What is this? That's an ATM 500. Okay. Can I unload it? Yes, I can. I can also load it. Excellent. All right. They can get in, a few of them at the very yes. least. Out. Yes. And now they can traverse Ready. inside Over. the vehicle. Ready. How Ready. wonderful. Out. Are there any benefits to this? Because as far as I remember, this is... Waiting. It's just okay. a transport out. vehicle. It doesn't really... Provide you with any other benefits. What are my objectives? Destroy all units. Thanks. That's um, not really helpful. Will I be able to construct a base? Why is the soundtrack so dissonant? Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. That's the part I love about this game. But it just has... The degree of sentimentalism I would expect from a soap opera, not a goddamn RTS game. What is going on here? It's as if these guys have traveled forward in time. <laughs> Into the future. Of, I don't know, the year 2005. And they've discovered the, the smooth jazz trailers. The fifth game is Gwent by C Project Red. It is a digital collectible card game. This brief summary should take no longer than 20 minutes. Um, great! <laughs> and I kind of have to go through the tutorial because I have never played this game in my life. Except that that's not much more than the time that I have for this game. You roll three cards a turn. My opponent goes first, that's understandable. The cards, the cards are animated, okay, that's an elder bell. 
What are his stats? I'm sorry, what, what's the attack and defense on the bell? Play a card by selecting it and placing it on... In one of the rows. Okay, there are two rows. I can only play a single card per turn. What exactly are the stats on the bell? I appreciate the bird, but what the hell? Okay, six cost, presumably, and six what? Six food? Deploy, so that's battle cry, presumably. That's a beast. A beast is a tribe, as far as I understand it. Seven. Is that the number of cards? How about the amount of mana that I have? To be able to play those cards. What's this? The log? You can only play one card per turn. I get it, fine. Um, hold on, you all... Dandelion, Vainglory. Okay. Well, let's put you on the front line and uh, let's have a destroy the puzzle. Okay, damage only by two. Fair enough. There is no attack phase. You reach man on the battlefield and contribute towards the score. The player with the most points wins. Fair enough. When is that counted exactly? Hold on, what do you mean preview? Alright, that's my deck. I will not find out what I... to draw next turn. Makes perfect sense. Fair enough, each card has an assigned number of points. These points serve as everything, as far as I understand it. Okay. Paul fucking infantry. All right then. He becomes a five-point unit for some reason. Spawns two drones, boosts all other insectoids. That's not an insect. Oh boy. Oh, hold on. Rounds and turns are separate things. As as far as I can see, because I have not really drawn much of anything. Boost adjacent unit. What do you want of me? It's an allied unit. The no target destroy itself. Okay. Your opponent has more points than you and wins this round, but don't worry. <laughs> you have to win two out of three. Damn it! So these units don't even fight directly? At the start of every round, both players draw three cards from their deck. Well enough. Consider a bronze unit in your graveyard, alright. Is that obligatory? Does it only happen if you deploy it in melee, or do you have to deploy it in melee? Presumably I should play Geralt, who will destroy this monster. I hate points. I've got more points now. Harpy. Deploy a consumer allied unit. Bonded spawn. A Harpy egg. What does bonded mean? Trigger if you control a copy of this card. Okay. Just boost yourself. Try to win them all, but you won't. No attack phase, eh? You won this round and 
In a crown half, the player who wins the third round gets a second crown half, secures victory. I somewhat get this, but um, I find it very alien. Draw a card and play a card. Yes, card draw appears to be quite important here. Damage enemy units by two. Not the way to go. There's nothing to damage. Let's deploy then the land, the poet. Pick a card to play. Play Paul fucking infantry. Charge too. I'm sorry, what is that? A number of times an order ability can be used. When it comes to charge X can gain additional charges. Order. Manually triggered. <laughs> Why would you consume your allied units? What's wrong with you? So you need boost self by its power. Okay. You can banish stuff from the graveyard too, so you can eat them off your graveyard. Intriguing. Three enemy units can be damaged by this, so I'll play the medic instead. You will sweat like the swine in that jacket. Let's deploy him in the melee row. What is the significance of two rows then? I hate portals. I'll win based on points, but I uh, still find this bizarre to an extent that you don't actually attack in some capacity. You'd think that would happen. Instead it only fires off as uh, the abilities of units fire off. Okay, at the beginning of each game you can swap out cards in your hand with random cards from your deck. You can mulligan, fair enough. So what's the downside exactly? Why wouldn't I just have the cards with most power? Oh boy. Is that an ability? Or I supposed to just use the hero power? Launch an enemy unit by one. Well, that um doomed. Says that removes this unit from the game when it leaves the battlefield. So it doesn't go to the graveyard, fair enough. Fair enough, I can still play the play a card, that's handy. Let's play a poor fucking infantry. The wolf pack will damage the infantry, predictably enough. I'm really losing on points, and presumably that means I'm going to lose this round. 
Although this boost might be handy, I guess. Let's place this guy in the front lines. So far it doesn't matter whether something is on the front lines or the back lines. All too much. But presumably that comes into play somehow. Pass now and save a strike for later. Really? Fair enough, I guess I see the wisdom in that. Well then click OK, you have to hold on pass to pass. If you're going to lose, you might as well lose. <clears throat> well, holding on to some decent cards you might have. Run with incessant. Boosts himself by five, so he becomes a six. <laughs> a six drop. Well, a six power card, a six point card. When you play a soldier. Summon this unit from your graveyard to a random ally. Bro. Uh, deploy the melee, damage an enemy by two. Deploy the range, damage two units by one. Fair enough. This is the buff. This is the guy who likes buffs. The wolf has nothing to damage. Yaraka swarm spawns drones and a huge cooldown. Let's damage two units by one then. That was reasonably handy. Oh right, of course I can use my hero power as well. Down that goes. Auto pass. My opponent passes. He seems to have given up. Your opponent passes while I have the lead. You can pass now and proceed to the final round. He decided to pass. Let's not bolster the bold. That would be a waste. I can just pass now and since we both passed the points are tallied up and I win. <laughs> Round three. Three more cards. <sighs> Two more against remain. What is zeal? Not ability can be used on the same turn the card is played. Order. Boost an allied unit by one. Let's mulligan him. Mastercrafted spear. Zeal. Order. Damage enemy unit by one. Charge four. Limit one charge per turn. That seems like equipment or something. Can you equip this on a unit? Or is this an artifact that you place beside you? I don't want to redraw. The player who wins the round gets to go first in the next one. Okay. Let's play this guy. On the front lines. For this most beautiful of maidens, I shall fight a hundred jewels. Oh. Let's shoot one of the drones. Play Doblathana. Uh, Doblathana Ultra on the back lines. I never miss. To kill them all.
Consumer I like unit. Charge two. Fair enough. This can eat things. <laughs> We're even at 10 to 10. Let's play the sergeant. Stand and fight. Use him to buff this guy. Oh my, yeah, I can use both charges. Fair enough, fair enough. <clears throat> I don't think I can recharge him, but that's okay. This monstrosity decides to gorge itself upon its allies. Okay, what was that spell? Impenetrable fog. Spawn fog on enemy row for three turns. Okay, and what does the fog do exactly? Fog. At the start of the Owen's turn, damage the lowest powered unit in this row by two. She's gonna die. And how do I play this? The stabby spear. It can immediately begin to stab. Nice. And of course I can still use my hero power, so let's do that. Let's murder the drone. All that remains is that single monstrosity. The Barbegazi. A wyvern can thrive. What the hell does that mean? It's deployed in the ranged row, then it damages enemy units by two. It was not, but uh, it could have. What, what does thriving mean? I want to see a description, damn it! Oh, fine. Wait, I'm sorry, what the hell? Oh, right, of course, I can use all those. Even on the enemy's turn. So let's hit the wyvern a bit. Why can I not pass? I shall not pass. Let's buff these units. Damage random enemy units by two. Death wish, repeat the deploy. What's that wish? Triggers have its ability when destroyed or moved from the battlefield to the graveyard. Okay. Well, that's terrifying. Deploy melee damage, three enemy units by two. Then move them to the range row. Let's also blast this. Slice it with my magical sword. Thus I win on points, overwhelmingly, 15 to fall. I'm still not sold on this, it has to be more to it than that, right? It has to be. The start of the match, both players draw 10 cards. Players take turns playing cards until both pass. Remember, you need to win two rounds, so you should save some cards for later. Our new cards carry over to the next round. You then draw three cards to a maximum of ten. Each player plays cards until both pass. Remember, you need to win two rounds. To get a full crown. Understandable. Since both players won a round, a final round is played to determine the winner. Yes, yes, each one has half a crown, so play the third one. Any cards remaining from previous rounds carry over, and each player draws three cards, up to a maximum of ten, as far as I understand it. You draw those cards, then you play some cards, someone wins, 
Choosing the right round to play your cards is the key to victory. That does make perfect sense. Oh, who is that? That's tactical advantage. It's your turn to start, which means you can redraw one additional card. Mol mol getting power. Okay, what are these things? Hawker healer, elf. Deploy in melee, boost an allied unit by two. Deploy in ranged, heal an allied unit by four. Better in ranged if the units are damaged, better up front if you just want to boost them. Boost self for, by one for each elf. Okay, that's an elf that likes to see elves around. Till near fight. Spawn and summon a base copy of this unit to the other allied row. Makes perfect sense. More elves. Deploy. It's, yeah, so battle cry damage an enemy unit by two. Whenever moved, damage a random enemy unit by two. Moved. Wonder if I can easily move it between rows. I know this lady. There's of course this, it boosts a unit by six, which is amazing. Elf Swordmaster. Can damage an enemy unit by one, but that has a cooldown. It does not have a number of charges, it just has a cooldown. But the cooldown gets decreased when you play elves, so... Let's play a lot of elves. The Impenetrable Fog. It's, um, it's quite powerful. Deals damage to a single unit on, in a given row to the weakest one, but at the same time, there's at least a bit of damage over time. Thunderlion gives me a card, excellent. And then a card can be played alongside him. I'm not sure I want to um, necessarily mulligan anything. <sighs> I'm not sure I want to play this guy early. But then again, if I am to play him, since the board does not transfer, I might as well choose to play him this time. And for that, I need to mulligan to get m as many elves as humanly possible. All as elvenly possible, I guess. Let's get rid of the debuff. Starting player has a stratagem card on the battlefield. Okay, what are you? Order. Boost an allied unit by 5, then banish tactical advantage. Alright then. Presumably you don't want to start because the enemy then responds to that. So you want to go second to play the appropriate card. I could play the elf that uh, gives me more elves. By duplicating himself. Oh, you know, I could play this elf, quite powerful, at fall, and at the same time has a nice little ability that will become more and more powerful as I get more and more elves. Damage an enemy unit by one. That's uh, not happening. There are no enemy units on the board quite yet. Could have boosted the elf. First and foremost, attack the infantry. Then let's spawn some elves. None shall tread on us. Let's also use the hero power to deal some more damage. Those poor bastards. It's not weird. Why is it not auto-passing? Oh, because I can still use tactical advantage. I'm not sure... I'm not sure I know which card I want to boost, if any. Let's just pass. Oh, the booster I'm by one. Charge two. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's the sergeant. 
Take it buffed all the way to hell. Oh, uh, that cooldown goes down if the turns go by, but it also goes down if I summon elves. Magnificent. Let's blast here once. And play these elves. Damage the sergeant. Can't use the hero power, the only thing left is the tactical advantage, which I am not going to use quite yet. That's the sergeant, we have already seen him. Of course he boosts the infantry. Which is uh, pretty impressively buffed by this point. Alright then. I will escalate this, and I will eventually play this elf. They'll just get boosted all the way to hell. You. Damage the sergeant. And then... Oh, intriguing. Damage enemy by two. Boost ally by two. I'll use both abilities when bonded. Bonded meaning... If I already have another copy. I could summon the officer, but... Actually, I presumably should do that. Let's summon the officer. Catch the sergeant. Let's end the turn. Damage must be by fall. Oh boy. <laughs> it's not damage, that's absolutely amazing. Alright then. I'll use both abilities. Because this guy is bonded, right? Excellent. Let's use this. Use the hero power to bash the infantry as much as humanly possible. <laughs> Let's end the turn. Boost an allied unit by two. <sighs> These guys. Oh my goodness, that is a goose. Fine, let's deploy her in melee. Hold on, why am I doing this? I'm just increasing my advantage, but that, that makes no sense. I'm just wasting time. I'm going to win here anyway, I think. I'm just wasting my resources. It's not like I'm going to win more. <clears throat> oh boy, I should have played this guy before. Alright, let's spawn some elves, I guess. With three damage randomly between all enemy units. <laughs> Insufficient number of elves. Blast this guy. The sixth game is Collard by IMGN.pro. Uh, knowing how a goddamn compass works and not getting lost in the forest simulator. Okay, finds a horror game with features exploration. 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains, 
a group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Otorten Mountain. Why? What was the purpose? Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. That probably means something. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. They froze to death, didn't they? On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. But why? Three sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace and two bodies. The they were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? What happened though? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. What happened to them? The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Okay. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No what? external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen, from an avalanche, or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. That makes no sense. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered, deep under the snow. There's no sign of struggle, there are no external injuries. Whatever happened to them was either self-inflicted or paranormal. Otherwise, they would have suffered some external injuries, they would have had some bruises that were not self-inflicted by climbing a goddamn tree or falling onto something. There would be some external trauma. Something. Something reasonable. <sighs> Two good things in life. What more could a man want? Nice graphics and a smooth frame rate. That's as much as I want. Nice graphics and a smooth frame rate. Without a smooth frame rate, the graphics are not as palatable. So if I can only have one of the two, I'd rather have a smooth frame rate. But if I can have both, then that's much appreciated. And of course different people have different standards. Perhaps mine aren't incredibly high, especially considering the fact that I've played plenty of retro games, and thus I am used to very um, bell bone experiences. Which weren't exactly ghastly. I wouldn't say that graphics back in the day were bad, they simply were not as sophisticated. With a few notable exceptions, of course. Some games were simply bad, and some games. Simply featured early graphics, and thus you get um, early low poly games or early 3D games that just did not have enough triangles at their disposal. <laughs> Even though they desperately wanted to, but they could not afford them. 
And that's what a grotesque in that way. And of course, early 2D games simply did not have enough pixels. <laughs> and did the best they could with what they had. They all did. But of course, all those innovative titles are... Um, underwhelming. But they needed to be there in the first place. So someone has to be the innovator. We need someone to make the first move. I am very thorough. That's not exactly, presumably, what I'm supposed to be doing, but... Uh, it's somewhat difficult for me to come to terms with um, the idea that I might not necessarily want to explore every single bit, go for every single corner, trudge and trudge through every single... Snowflake over here In hopes that One of them at random will prove to be somehow special Noteworthy Important enough to remark upon Remarkable Extraordinary in some fashion. No, it's it's all uniform and um Largely unimpressive. It is breathtaking, I would say. From my perspective, it's quite nice. But at the same time, methodically walking through every single bit, every single inch of this terrain might not necessarily be serving anyone. You, me, um... Anyone, um... Any capacity. But then again, am I supposed to refuse to explore? I would like to get my bearings. Presumably, protagonist got here. Oh, I do not like walking on tracks. Oh, I hate this. Not exactly sure why, but uh, there are very few things more nightmarish from my perspective than railroad tracks. Anyway, presumably I arrived here to investigate those <laughs> bizarre deaths that occurred a while back, possibly. I'm not sure what the distance in terms of time is between the events transpiring and the protagonist investigating. What I do know is that I've spent almost 10 minutes wandering around the starting area, having seen pretty much nothing. Which um, doesn't really frustrate me that much, but because once again, I really like to be thorough. But uh, considering the time constraints, that might not be the optimal use of my time. But then again, I don't necessarily have to leave everything in. <sighs> Let's get off the tracks. Explore a bit further in this direction. I'm not sure to what exactly I should stick. Should I stick to the tracks and explore... ...away from the tracks a bit? Or should I stick to the area um, that's rightmost, essentially, and explore over there? It's essentially trying to determine a way not to get lost. I'm not following a river, but I might as well be following the train tracks. Why not? Is that wise? I have no indication of where I should be going. And it is very much so likely that there is no clear way that I should indeed be going. <sighs> From an in-game perspective, my behavior is exceedingly bizarre, isn't it? What would a sane person do in those circumstances? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> look, look at the sunlight gleaming off the railroad tracks. Glorious. Magnificent, beautiful. I 
I appreciate the ambiance. It's quite atmospheric. It's all quite subtle as well. I do appreciate action. I certainly do. Most certainly. At the same time. I appreciate everything, as you presumably know already. Does I ap approve of um, these sorts of efforts? I appreciate being given the opportunity to explore. Yes, and then the protagonist froze to death. The end. Perhaps I shouldn't climb the mountain. I don't like those eerie whispers. Must be the wind. Must be the wind. That sounds so uncanny. There's a better turn, but I cannot quite summon it to the forefront of my mind right now. It's a very nice, very obscure term. That's essentially an antonym of a very well-known term. At least seems like it. But semantically, is pretty much nothing like it. Oh my goodness. At least I'm glad I'm not a video game reviewer, because um, if I were to say only play this for you know, half an hour or an hour in this sort of fashion, then to write a review, <laughs> that would be horrible. Because it would either be based on the empirical evidence, and thus would be absolutely bizarre and limited in scope, or it would be based on extrapolations, and thus would be very fanciful, perhaps, but at the same time, Largely fictitious. Go. Like, oh, I, I think this is what you would find further on. Well, uh, how about you actually check, Vestin? How about you actually check what's further on instead of speculating? You know, now that I think about it, in most sort of circumstances, you would expect to actually have your hand held to some extent. You start the game and. Uh, Yes, and you encounter an NPC that gives you a quest. That's not the genre I'm playing at this moment. What the hell? But this you would expect there to be some leads, something to guide your way, something to focus your attention, something to give you an idea of where to head. I guess the intro somewhat did. There are no NPCs to talk to, however. As far as I can tell, I just need to... Head right into snow. Up the mountain, I should go. And try to unravel this mystery. Supposed to have a compass, a map, I was supposed to have stuff, but nothing seems available at this point in time. Can't quite climb this, of course I can't. There's a house over there. This, presumably, is blocked off, which is good. I like to be boxed off. Open environment scare and confuse me. You can presumably see why, my goodness. Not quite sure how to act in a more natural fashion. I feel like I would miss something and it would just... It would torment me for the rest of time. Such a ludicrously fastidious fashion of exploration, isn't it? It's painstakingly meticulous. I ought to pay attention, though. Horrible things happen in these mountains. Bizarre and terrifying things. Okay.
Further up here I go. I can always return should I choose to. Right. That's something to keep in mind. You can run. I appreciate the effects. I appreciate everything. Let's hope I don't lose my way. Now that's a bizarre formation, isn't it? I could rush. Are you a paranormal investigator, dude? Fine, let's go through here. Down this gauntlet of trees. Look, a cave. Um, what's that? No! No! Compass. Map. Will I get them now? What happened to me? Danger map here everywhere. What do you mean danger? Seriously? Never tried to hold on to your humanity. When others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment. When you could really not remember your sins. When they took away your loved ones, leaving you to rot in the dark. The problem is that in their darkness, you have never been alone. Wait, hold on. So I did actually set up camp over here. I mean, I've rebound everything, so I need to be mindful of this. Oh boy. So this is where I decided to set up camp, and these are the locations I ought to consider, I guess. Where do I want to go, really? Here, possibly? 
That spot with number one. 34 north. East. Uh, I guess I need to head west then. Then a bit south. Oh, look at that flame. Right, and north is what exactly? Oh boy, which of these is north? The black one or the red one? I presumably should know the answer, but I don't. Damn it. <laughs> Excellent outdoorsmanship, just top shelf. I would presume that bl black is north. 50-50 chance. Well, let's stop. those pillars what the hell is going on here it's a pathway leading north so I think black is north by that logic what is this what is the pit then what is all this eerie lighting um I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vichai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region and knew the area very well. Mm. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometer and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 meters and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. And what was the mission these kids were sent on? Because they were kids. They were not a team of professionals by any stretch of the imagination. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. Anything in the diary? No. Reports? None. Articles? Nothing. Survival info. Oh, right. Sorry. Um, yes, of course. Running in deep snow is tiring. Adjust pace. Before setting up on a long journey, rest in the camp. Set a goal. You can focus on an object to take a better look at it. Lighting away the flashlight. Helps. Never get the help of the map and compass. Build accessible rocky notches may lead to interesting places and shortcuts. In access to them, you will sometimes have to squeeze through. Low-lying obstacles to jump. How about I... Whoa, ki what the... Kids! Stop! Stop right there! No! 
I'm here to help! What shortcut did I set up for the journal? Of course, I genuinely forgot to set up a shortcut for the journal. <laughs> Silly me. I need to pay attention to where I am. Is that where I am? Well, in that case, I'm heading south. That's congruent with my observations. I was um, under the assumption that that red was south. Okay, now I'm uh, largely lost. So now I'm heading through here. Uh, this is south, so this is uh, a bit southwest. There are pathways leading there, but I don't think I'll find much of anything here. I don't think spectral kids are to be found anywhere nearby. That sounds like a dull creaking. That's... That must be an auditory hallucination. There don't appear to be any doors nearby. Well, this is just peachy. It's essentially a lost in the woods simulator at this stage. I need to re... I need to re-establish where my camp is located. Then and only then shall I proceed. I will not go off in a wild goose chase. What is that on the horizon? At the glowing point. Either way, let's reach the pillars first. The pillar location, as far as I can tell, is essentially the center of the map. To the north of the pillars is base camp. Bizarre. North of the pillars, so through here. What is this? Symbols etched into the ground? Oh boy. Is this north? The seventh game is Nightmares from the Deep to Cursed Heart by Artifex Mundi, a hidden object puzzle adventure game. For most of the 18th century, the Caribbean Sea was a deadly place to sail. Its waters were terrorized by the fearsome Captain Remington. Rumors spread from port to port about Remington's pact with the devil. During his nefarious career, he plundered many ships and murdered even more men. Until the day armed forces finally caught up to him. All right then. <laughs> 
So let's regular mode and expert mode. And regular mode, there's no misclick penalty in hidden object scenes. Uh, the active zones glimmer frequently. Mm. The hidden skip buttons recharge quickly. I'm sorry, recharge quickly, not just exist. Locations with unavailable action are indicated on the map. Oh my goodness. On expert mode, there is a misclick penalty in hidden object scenes. What are you gonna do? What's the difference if there's a penalty? The hidden skip buttons take longer to recharge. But you can still skip stuff and get ends. Active zones are not indicated. Well, thank you. Locations with an available action are not indicated on the Mac except hidden object scenes. So they're still indicated. Wow. <laughs> now, 300 years later, Remington's body is being extracted from the depths of his watery grave. Soon, this precious artifact will be on display in the Caribbean Naval Museum. My museum. <clears throat> well, that is quite appreciable, except, um... Except if it's actually a ghastly artifact that is either going to get stolen or is going to tempt people into committing gruesome acts. Get a curator on an upcoming exhibition. Or the delivery worker to take the crate to the showroom. Click the delivery worker. Fine, fine, I can click him. Never played a hopper before. A hidden object puzzle game. I understand that they are what uh, adventure games have devolved to over many years. They're cheaper to produce than classical point and clicks. Sure thing, Miss Black. I'll leave the crate at the end of the exhibition hall. The cursor will change to a lip cycle when you can talk to a character. Classic. Alright, so that's not me. That's someone I'm in front of. I'm from this perspective. I am the camera. And of course, uh, there's nothing else that I can click. Hi, Mom. I just want to sneak a quick peek at this legendary pirate, and then I'll stay out of your hair. Come on, let's check out the crate that just arrived. All right, sweetheart, after all. What sort of, what sort of a mother am I if I'm not going to show you gruesome pirate corpses? The cursor will change to an arrow when you can move to another location. Click the exhibition hall to move further. Fair enough. So we get a modal cursor. Can change into lips, can change into an arrow. Presumably can change to a hand if you can interact with something, and an eye if you can investigate further by observing it. And of course, I am already trying to look for alternative objectives, even though this is the tutorial, so presumably there's a single thing I can click. The cursor will change to a magnifying glass when you can have a closer look at a certain area. It was between a magnifying glass and an eye. It was between those two, it always is. Anything else I can interact with on this screen? It doesn't appear that way. Why is she observing the delay? Oh, right, sorry. This is the crate. This is the crate we're opening. This is another crate entirely. With fragile contents, no one cares. The cursor will change to gears if you can interact with an object. Okay, fine. So not a hand. Gears also can be used in such a way. Although a hand is more intuitive, I think. Gears are usually associated with the settings menu. I click the cutlasses in order to get to the bottom of the crate. Really? I'd like to click on this and get some additional information. But fair enough. Okay, I have to get them out of the way. No, stop blinking in my face, I want to read the plaque. Golden Cutlass! This probably belonged to Captain Henry Remington at the beginning of the 18th century. Probably. Alright then. I'm probably impressed. Stop blinking at me. What if I want to click another one? Am I clicking anyone in particular or is, does it even not matter which one I click? Fair enough. 
This is a very simple game, the name of which, in the English language, I cannot quite tell. But, uh, presumably you're familiar with what I'm talking about. You just retrieve objects from a pile as they are interleaved. Because it will change into a hand icon, you can pick an object up. Ah, and here we come to the reason why the hand icon is... Um, not used for the interact action. You have the hand to pick stuff up, whereas you have the interact button if you can just interact with things. Usually there isn't a difference made between these things. If you can pick something up, then you pick it up upon interacting with it. Well, especially should not be that much of a difference in practice, considering the fact that uh, there's only a single interaction each time you mouse over something, as far as I can tell at the very least. You can also use hints in adventure mode, though, please. They will lead you to the next action. So as far as I can tell, there are essentially two modes in this game. An overworld mode, where you go around the exhibition center, around this museum, whatever the hell it is. And uh, then there's hidden object mode. Well, you zoom in upon a particular scene and then look for objects. All right, then. Let's investigate this crate again. Antique pirate weapons, they were just in time for the exhibition. Excellent, so that's why it says maybe. Because uh, it probably has nothing to do with the guy. But hey, I wanted to be able to claim that it does. We can interact with these crates. This is presumably, once again, the crate of swords. Yes, it is. Let's look at this little poster. Scourge of the Seas. Anything interesting about this one? Yes, that's Henry Remington, supposedly the most fearsome pirate of the Caribbean. Or the Caribbean, if you prefer it that way. You click away to zoom out. Very basic. I can return to the hall. Let's investigate this crate, as it seems to be interactive. You can use objects in the scene to solve puzzles. Click on the box cutter, then click on the tape, yeah. Pick it up. Use it. <laughs> of course, it's a force of habit. I dragged it along, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't make a difference. I'm not playing Amnesia here, or Penumbra. Things don't work that way. Also, I ought to investigate this. The pieces for the exhibition have been delivered. Well enough. Open left side, open right side, open this, open that, bam! An envelope. To the museum curator. This print back pistol is a rare artifact, probably tailor made for the infamous Captain Henry Remington. We discovered the pistol near Remington's gravesite. Though it was buried in sand. I don't like sand. It's cold and, and tarnished by salt. I don't like salt. It's, it seemed to gleam in the water. Strange. The diving team. Oh, well, thanks for extending such a message and providing me with uh, an extensive explanation for why you find this flintlock pistol to be suspicious and eerie. Let's talk to people. There, you're all set. Now, if you don't mind, I'll be on my way. Sometimes, when you talk to a character, you receive a useful item. Click your daughter. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. The crate is nailed shut. Do you think we could pry the lid off? With so many tools lying around, I'm sure you can find a crowbar. I'll stay here and keep an eye on the crate. Oh, right. I still have the key card to your office. Here you go. And don't worry, this mummified corpse won't be going anywhere without me. Frankly, I'm not sure that's uh, really what I wanted to hear. Because it is still logically viable for for this um, terrifying unearthed corpse to be going somewhere with her. Which does not please me as a concept. Also, why exactly did I leave the Kika to my office with this young lady? Why did she need it to begin with? That's my office. I had another objection to raise. What was my objection? What was my objection that I had? Ah yes, why did the burly man not open the crate for me? Seriously, I get it, he placed it here, but... 
Would it have killed him to do me a goddamn favor and actually open the thing? Help me set up the exhibit a tiny bit? I would have paid extra. Now I have to deal with this. You made an important note, which will help you in adventure. You can check the diary. Fair, no fair enough. All notes are summarized in the objective section of the diary. Click the objectives before. Objectives will be checked off once you complete them. So it's not even a traditional point in the kick adventure game. Yeah, of course it's not a traditional point in the kick adventure game. I thought we had that covered. <laughs> Obviously it's simplified. Still, um, it's simplified to such an extent that you explicitly receive quests. You have a list of things you are supposed to accomplish that you can check on the objective screen, if you so desire. And you can check your notes in case you forget something. Might as well read through this. Why not? It is here. I might as well not ignore what is right in front of me. And specifically in an adventure game, I might as well read the text. Tomorrow is the opening of the museum's new exhibition, Scourge of the Seas. There's still so much to thank goodness my daughter is helping me out. The main exhibit is still on its way and should be delivered this evening. Here was my to-do list. Call Bob about the new safe. Buy something for dinner. Done. Confirm address with the shipping company, okay? Have the crate delivered. Done. The crate! At last the courier arrived to the, the most important exhibit. I have to find a crowbar and open this crate to check the state of the exhibit. It's supposed to be the main attraction of the new pirate show in my museum. Let's investigate. I know that I can't quite open it yet, but... Uh, Oh, f thanks for the crowbar sign. I have yet to see one in reality. This sturdy pine crate is nail shadow. Definitely need a tool to open it. Yes, I can see what sort of tool we are going to need. There's nothing else of interest about it, is there? <laughs> Could try to pry it open with a prized cutlass, but let's not do that. Let's head down to the office instead. To the hall first, then let's locate the office, then let's open it with the key card that I have retrieved. The most fearsome pirate in the world. Grand opening soon. Though the same, but uh, I wanted to investigate both just to be on the safe side. Well, is my office. Here, presumably. Oh, these hotspots are enormous. Look how far they extend. You can't miss them. It's locked. The basement is locked. Have to keep the visitors out. Fair enough. I should have the key, shouldn't I? No matter. Is this the office? You can use inventory items to clear the obstacles. Yes. Get the key card. Pick it up. Apply it to the card reader. Unlock the office. Clicky. Clicky. Let's go. I could click on things immediately, but understandably, I want to investigate everything. I don't want to miss out on details just because I hastily go through everything. On the flip side, once I investigate something, I remain reasonably sure that there's no need to investigate it again. Because I am thorough. In case of emergency, break glass, fair enough. Ah, paperwork. There's no escaping it. I will not necessarily be reading out this text. I guess I'll prefer reacting to it rather than just explicitly reading it out all the time. So do knock yourselves out. I'll be reading out text like this. Sarah, your new wall safe has been installed and the pirate artifact transferred to it as requested. Oh, I see. The priceless gem. Tell you what, let's not place it on the corpse. We will have to place it on the corpse, won't we? We'll have to take the red gem from the safe, put it on the corpse, and things will go haywire from the. I already dislike that. Mark my words, I, I am objecting at this stage to this course of action, even though presumably I'll have to go along with it. I wrote down the new safe code and left it on your desk. Wow, that is, that is very safe, dude. That is extremely safe. What's in here? 
Just an envelope. Dear Sarah, according to my research, this small treasure chest belonged to Captain Remington. I was unable to unlock it, and I couldn't bear the thought of breaking it open, even though its contents will be more valuable still. Perhaps you can figure out the secret of its lock. Sincerely, Stan. Stan, you suck. You can't even open a box, Stan. What is wrong with you? Get it locked. Requires a unique key. Well, we shall find the key then. The key shall be located, the box shall be open. What a fat cat. What's this? Fair enough. That's the daughter. Is that a pentagram? Oh, no, that's a... <laughs> That's an asterisk. Of course, that's an emoticon. Of course the safe is behind a large mask. Why wouldn't it? You could try to call someone. There's so many objects to interact with. Let's go to the last spot on this radio. There we go. That's presumably the note with the combination. There we go. Right, four, left, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, left, right, left. Presumably we have all that jotted down. What is this? Captain Henry Remington was a terror of the Caribbean Sea during the early part of the 18th century. His infamy quickly spread after a series of attacks on merchant ships, but his reign ended after just a few years when he mysteriously disappeared. Remington's body was never found <laughs> until today. Proving this fascinating myth true became the goal of naval historians and many expeditions were sent out in search of his earthly remains. At last we have located his corpse. And now we need to locate a crowbar. A key to the basement, presumably the crowbar is in the basement. Yoink! It's the basement key! It says so right here. You don't just get the item itself, you explicitly get told what the item is. That is oh so convenient. That's just the book, you can't click on the monitor. What is this note? Ah oh, yes, of course, that's it. I can't click on the mouse, that's just attached to the note. If you get stuck in a puzzle, you can skip it pressing the skip button. <laughs> Seriously? No. I'll not be skipping it, especially since I don't even have to look at my notes. I don't have to do that. It explicitly gets stickied over here. So I would really have to be insufferably dumb to not be able to figure this one out. It's very explicit. Then again, I'm playing a Hopper game. I really shouldn't take too much pride in this. The storm damaged the phone lines. That's um, reasonably intriguing. I'll not be opening the box. I'll not be opening the safe quite yet. I'm not sure for what reason, but I will not. Let's investigate further. I want to see everything. Shipping of a lot from the 18th century seems even pirates enjoyed a good puzzle. Fair enough. It is an intricate puzzle indeed. Button down the hatches. It's really pouring out though. It really is. I think I've essentially covered everything at this particular point. There's the exhibition, there's my office, and there's the basement. That's it. The only thing I have to do is to open the safe, go to the basement, retrieve the crowbar, things like that. I would say that depending on the level of intricacy of a given hopper game, it can pretty much approach a point and click. What exactly does it lack compared to that? Fanciful animations? Possibly? I guess that's the most notable reason, the fact that most scenes are simply static. And of course the hidden object element. 
is notable. Unexpected discovery. Yes, invitation. Exhibition starts tomorrow. We have a lot of work to do. A lot of work indeed. Those both are the same thing. Presumably if I click here, I'll get something different. Is that this mm, a description? Yes, artwork from the rotating exhibition. Can I turn off the light? I cannot. <laughs> I was about to ask, can you die in this? Presumably not. <laughs> uh, more artwork. Nice little lady pirate. The, the crowbars had uh, hitbox literally extended all the way to here. It's amazing that I was able to pick it up clicking the, but fair enough. Why am I pixel hunting? That's pretty much nothing to find. Okay, let's open this. Why am I doing this? Well, because I can. <laughs> because in any sort of adventure game, you click on everything you can. Well, presumably with the exception of those sorts of games where you actually can die, where you do not click on certain things. Okay, you can turn the lights on and off. We don't have fuses stuck. Presumably, we'll have to fix things later on. Everything is in working order for now. But I guess the lights will, unfortunately, inevitably go off pretty soon. Hello. We need a crowbar to open this crate, but I don't know where to find one. Well, gee. We need a crowbar to open this crate, but I don't know where to find one. Of course you don't. There we go. City Panko is nail shot. Let's continue to crowbar it until it is... Okay! Well done, game, well done! Done! New save, combination of the new save which is installed. Yeah, yeah, I have to open the save. Get if I was this tidy. Exhibit is missing three crucial artifacts which were delivered separately. I told you so. I have told you so. That's a bad idea. See, here's the thing. Here's what we are about to do. We are about to hand over two weapons to this corpse and then we will give it the cursed gem. You can see where this is going. I should find them and restore the pirate's original appearance. Oh no. Achieving historic authenticity is one of my primary goals during this exhibition. Please don't tell me that you are going to have this thing unbound. So according to the attached reproduction, Remington used to wear specific accessories. Don't give the corpse weapons. Corpses are not known for responsible handling of firearms. Oh, indeed, melee weapons. When it comes to specific accessories, you will not find these in the crate. They were delivered separately. Outfit Captain Remington in his full regalia before the showing. Professor Holmes, P.S. Received my other package. Keep it in your office until you figure out how to open it. Um, that appears to be something behind this. You ate the gem? Well, I ate you! Scopes is maker still preserved. Almost ready for his public appearance. Almost. He ate the gem. The absolute madman. Hello. Professor Holmes was wise to leave the accessorizing to you, Mom. You're great at putting an outfit together. I, I sure am! Now let's give the cult some weapons! I don't like this. That's strange. Oh boy. The flashes of lightning are really playing a trick on my eyes. Oh boy. Let's retrieve the medallion and have all hell break loose. Electricity will go off, I can pretty much guarantee it. Right, full right.
Okay, it even marks what, what fall means. Okay. One, two, three, fall. No, that's right, six. What the hell? Oh, you have to... You don't even rotate it a given number of places in a direction. You rotate it to a given number in a given direction. Fine. Um, then you rotate left until you reach a six. Right until you reach a six. Left until you reach a one. Except you're not rotating left and right. You're rotating clockwise and counterclockwise. You can't rotate left or right. Oh, right. Sorry. I can't read. <sighs> I have been bested by a simplistic puzzle. Right fall, left nine. It's just sloppy execution. All you need to do is pay attention, but uh, alas, alas. Yeah, it's open. You click on this thing, you open the safe. And there it is. This Sarah, this necklace was found in the possession of an old Caribbean family. They said that one of the ancestors had something to do with Captain Remington. Maybe, just maybe, the reason the guy died is because someone stole... ...the necklace itself. Even though pi the pirates apparently ate the gem. Something to do with, the Captain, with Captain Remington, therefore I'm sending this on to you. If you were to find a missing gem, this necklace would surely benefit your exhibit. No one noticed the fact that the gem was inside the corpse's mouth. Alrighty then. What did I just collect? Oh, sorry, I just got rid of that. Some say this antique necklace is connected to Remington. Too bad it's missing its gem. Not for long, it's not. Unbelievable. The jewel casing claimed the gem as its own. This is a bad idea every step of the way. Look at those tentacles. I don't like it, not one bit. I'm only doing this under protest out of the necessity of the plot. <sighs> Let's talk to the well, daughter. Maybe it's a little weird, but I think that visitors will be amazed. Really? I figured you'd be more impressed with this. Battered old corpse. It's glowing. It's actually actively glowing. Logos, help me. I told you. Mom, you know I'm scared of the dark. Could you check the fuse box? Young lady, are you sure you want to stay with the corpse that's no longer bound and is armed? Lady, are you scared of the dark or of corpses more? In both circumstances, I would suggest getting the hell out of the dark. You have to check the fuse box, Mom. I'm too scared to go in the basement in the dark. Your funeral. Well, there goes my daughter, my progeny. No power, no lights. Hold on, it's too... Ugh. But I know that it's right there. Damn it, I need to find light. Game number eight is playing the Conquest by Taeon. It is an obscenely complex full X strategy game in a fantasy universe. This is somewhat terrifying because the so many setup parameters to mess with. So many parameters. I guess I'll just randomize most of them. So let's randomize this. I get the planes of fire, water, paradise, and the prime plane. This, however, has not been randomized. As far as I understand, and I could potentially randomize these things as well. Let's keep them as they are. Number of opponents, the difficulty level, the world size, fast movement, whether it's enabled or disabled, the game speed, the spell of domination, which instantly wins you the game. Neutral forces, features, uh, gateways, nodes, and ruins. 
And the density of resources, let's randomize this as well. Okay, uh, let's uh, disable fast movement. And set the difficulty to adapt, possibly. Which faction should I play? There are eight! Eight different factions available. High men, grey elves, orcs, dwarves, dark elves, the unhallowed, which are at war with everything. The draconians and the mirror dance. Let's go with orcs and play as red. The strong, a fast population growth, the ability to raid, whatever the hell that does. They have no ranged units, poor research and magic capabilities, which doesn't sound great in a game about wizards. But this isn't even the final choice. Far from it. Your next choice is your sorcerer. You can create your own, which would take a long time. Or you can choose a pre-made one. Okay, if you choose a pre-made one, which is it? And I genuinely don't know. Is there a guy who's essentially an orc? Not much of a guy, but that's a vampire elder. I don't know about that one. This looks like a bit of an orc. Two-headed... Two-headed ogre. Close enough. Uh, he's got destruction magic. Tier 9. And uh, mastery of destruction. Destruction spells are 15%. Cheaper to research and cast. Harder to resist. This guy gets an additional starting spell. Okay, what starting spells do I get? Oh, just these tier 1 spells. Static charge, bloodletting, acid arrow, flame arrow, disrupt undead, ice bolt. I get tier 2, lightning strike, disrupt wall, awesome, cold pulse, and a single tier 3 fireball. All from the sphere of destruction. Alright then, now I could read all of that right the hell now. But once again, if I read everything, that'll be half an hour of me reading everything. If I read it off screen, I'll have to spend an outrageous amount of prep time just preparing for everything. Which I'm not prepared to do. And of course, if I just start out without having read anything, that'll also have deleterious consequences. Namely, I'll have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm between a rock and a hard place, I'll have to balance these things. This is a 4X game, pretty much. No, thankfully, there's a bit, a smidgen of a tutorial in this, so I will not be going completely blind into this. You know, mighty sorcerer of all, the mage king, set on conquering the world, explore the lands, settle, develop cities, train armies, recruit legendary heroes, and hunt full treasures in monster and infested lairs. The scope of this game is just outrageously tremendous. Now, I thought, <laughs> in my naivete, that uh, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri was complicated, even though it's quite simplified compared to all, uh, all regular sorts of civilization games. But this! The scope of this! Aside from having all the sorts of things you expect from a civilization game, it's got so much more! You've got heroes, these armies can be quite complex. You have spells that you research that are also so complex. You have all sorts of planes upon which the action happens. There's just so much stuff. To become the soul master of planes, you must defeat the Arsos for the soul, cast the almighty spell of domination. Good luck. By using the question of button available on every screen, you can bring up the help window. You can use useful information concerning actions you can take in that panel. You can browse through hints by clicking on the blinking blue arrows on the sides of this window. This window? Blue arrows? What? Well, I hope there's further tutorial information to go with this and I'm not just entirely on my own. Is there a mini-map of some description? Yes, and you can toggle it on or off. Okay. Fair enough. The world loops, which is just as well. I start out on the plane of water, and that's all I know. <laughs> but of course there are more planes available.
Apparently the surveil button effectively just uh... Analyzes whatever the hell you're hovering over, which makes perfect sense. That's reasonably intuitive. Notifications. Any notifications? No notifications are available. You have gold, food, and mana. The mana you generate, you spend three ways. So it is essentially like civilization. You get food, so that your cities grow. You get gold, so that you can build stuff. And you get mana, that you spend on research and such. Oh, look at all the game here. Gives me bonus food. Uh, presumably, I ought to start out um, by um, analyzing what's in my city. Those are the, the three things you divide your mana income on, as far as I understand. Current research, very self-explanatory. This is current power. Right. The current power is... Uh, Oh, sorry, you you have power, and power you spend on research to look after mana. Now, spellcraft... Okay, fine, I don't remember how exactly you spend these things. I know that one of them is research, and they're essentially equivalents to what you would ordinarily get. But one of those things... One of those things is the mana your sorcerer gets to spend... ...in action. One is the thing you, you spend on research. There's a separate screen that deals with all of this. This is the mirror screen where you get to check out your own Sorcerer King. I picked out the one dealing with destruction. I haven't met anyone, so diplomacy is not available yet. Excellent. Books. Uh, research book is used to invent new spells. You always have eight random spells available to choose from. That's lovely. Casting spells. Um, Okay, this is the main book to cast spells. Favorites. All spells that will mark this favorite can be found under this tab. Um, storage. When a spell is ready, you can store it instead of casting it. Okay. This is the cost. In mana. All that cost to research and research points. New spells are marked with new. This is the spell icon. This is the spell teal. This is the spell circle. There are all these circles that we've just gone over. So, for instance, I have... I focus entirely on destruction, but there are many more circles of magic. And these do not align one to one as, uh, with the elemental planes. That's a separate thing. So we have all these elemental planes, and you have all these circles of magic. I'm sorry, this is what it's like to have uh, an initial bit of playthrough in a new Fall X game. Once again, perhaps I could have structured this differently, but uh, it's going to be a first impression sort of thing. And it's going to be up to about half an hour, so I'll well, <laughs> deal with what I'm doing. Sorry. You can salt in all sorts of ways. You can salt the spells alphabetically. You can salt them by the tiers, which also makes perfect sense. Higher tier spells, lower tier spells. You can sort them by type. You have tactical spells, which can only be used in combat. You have strategic spells, which can only be used on the minimap. Like in Heroes of Might and Magic. You have the overworld spells, you have combat spells. They are very much so different, with the overworld spells usually being useless. And you can sort by mana cost, because some are more expensive, some are less expensive, obviously. A Shufa spell can be used on the strategic map or the tactical map, both, obviously. And uh, he'll... Oh my goodness. So every single spell's description looks about like this. First of all, you get shown whether you can use it in combat, or you can use it out in the world. You get shown the cost, you get shown... Um... Let's actually read this. <laughs> Casting cost is based the amount of money I have to spell to cast... to cast that... spend to cast a spell. How is that... Why is there so much in this? Remember that you can only spend as much mana per turn as your spellcraft value. You can check your spellcraft value in the magic panel, which we'll get to momentarily. In bracket, you can see how much mana you need to spend every turn to boost your spell. 
how much mana you need to spend for every level of boosting your... I'm sorry, what you boost your spells on top of all of that that we've covered so far. Casting time, okay, so it takes some time to cast a spell. Saving throw. Whether it can be reduced be... Oh no, sorry, this is the saving throw, not the resistance. I'm sorry, where's the resistance mentioned? Spell resistance, yeah. So if, uh, if the target of a spell can use his spell resistance to nullify the effect. Okay. So if it can be nullified completely if you have the resistance. Or there's a saving throw as an alternative. Most uh, spells targeted at the enemy can be fully resisted or at least have their effect reduced by making a saving throw. Okay. So first of all, spell resistance. If you're resistant, so essentially immune to a given type of spell, nothing happens. If you're not resistant, or, you know, immune, which presumably would have been a better name for this. Unless it's not, not full all-time immunity, but just a resistance. But a resistance that's uh, binary, as in either nothing happens, or something does happen. If it's something does happen, then you have a saving throw, which can reduce the effect fully, in which case nothing happens, or it can, say, half the damage. You get a saving throw, you roll a d20. But, um, and the effectiveness of that is, is matched up to the difficulty class of the spell. You see DC values in a small circle. Okay, so this is the DC value. The duration of the spell. Because, yeah, it takes some time to cast the spell and then the spell lasts some time. Or, you know, it might be my instant, might last the entire battle, yada yada, it must, might last a couple of turns. The target, a friendly unit, enemy unit, etc. Area of effect, maybe one by one, maybe whatever, maybe it's AoE. That much is reached upkeep? Display the amount of mana you need to spend every turn to keep that spell active. Fair enough, that's also possible, apparently. Spell boosting. Certain spells can be boosted with more mana to make them powerful. Oh, that's, so that's like in wizardry, where you can... Oh, well, you can boost, except that well, you didn't spend additional resources, you just decreased the probability of success, but could have cast it at a, more, at a higher level of power. Can be boosted to make more powerful, or the more difficult to resist. Spell boost power will appear on a spell that can be boosted when the spell is cast. The more the spell is boosted, the more mana it costs, but the more effective it is. Blue crystals mean you have enough mana to boost this level, to this level. Red crystals mean that you lack required mana to boost to this level, and grey crystals are empty. Okay. <laughs> so, after we've gone through all of that, uh, here are all my spells and here are destruction spells. All of my spells are destruction spells, so there's really no difference as far as that's concerned. Here are... Arcane spells, basic spells, no new all sorcerers, fire spells, and water spells. So let me get this straight. You have these um, these circles, like destruction, but aside from the circles, you also get you also get uh, the planes to which a given spell is assigned. That's that's just ludicrous. Okay, so this spell is Destructive Fire. It costs 85. There's a casting time of 3. Let's say, when can I cast it? You cast it in the world? Okay. Target, enemy city. Okay. You set a city on fire. Fair enough, I get it. Cold Pulse. World. Deals 2d6 damage. Fair enough. You target an enemy army. Right, that's... Uh, that's not a combat spell, though. So you target the army outside of combat. Fair enough. I get it. That's just a casting screen. What about research? Well, we could research these spells, apparently. Um, transforms planes, swamp of all forests into a tundra. Do we want tundras? What is the benefit of us having a tundra? I don't know! Let's research shooting stars. It's a battle, it's a combat spell that targets enemy units. It's instant and deals 4d10 damage. Sounds reasonable enough to me. Research progress, 0 out of 282, remaining turns 39. 
Understandable. Have a nice research. Does this close the screen? If so, why is it not located on the spellbook? It closes the screen! What is this Mickey Mouse nonsense? It's like I'm using a Mac or something. You, sh you shouldn't have this be... It should be attached to the window, not to the ball. Okay, so that's the spellbook. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, what about city management? Oh, great! 11 pages of tutorial information on how you manage each particular city. <laughs> and the example name of the city is Piotr Kuptrybulanski. Oh, because of course it is! <laughs> Bloody genius! I'm sure the international audience is going to appreciate this very much. <laughs> As they desperately struggle to read it. Mm. Top shelf, people. Okay. So the city it is idle or rioting, or it's not. <laughs> if the city is idle, assign it goddamn tasks. If the city is rioting, that's no good. <laughs> Auto build. Well, that means that you have a governor sign, essentially. It's doing stuff automatically. The plane! The plane the city is located on. Yeah, so we get that. The population! Uh, I don't know why they felt it necessary to have this representation. We don't, I don't need to know how many people I actually have in a given city. It's irrelevant! But I guess those are essentially fractional citizens. Because, of course, in Civilization games, you get citizens, and those citizens can be placed on tiles. Obviously, you have two citizens, two people can be placed on tiles. But over here, you only place a thousand people. Because a thousand people essentially is one placeable citizen that can work a given tile. Which is, I guess, more reasonable, because then you form a relationship between the abstraction and what is actually going on and it gives you the benefit of having essentially fractional population growth you get plus a hundred so that's essentially 0 0.1 citizen per turn fair enough may seem more reasonable than 0 0.1 citizen per turn but you have to remember that you have this conversion ratio okay a thousand people one worker on a tile race symbol well yeah we know that it's gonna show everywhere then can we have Oh, sorry, there's, uh, there's more to that. We can capture cities from other races, and then we control cities belonging to other races. That's another degree of complexity that's involved here. I'm not sure that you actually convert a city when you capture it to your race. You don't. You don't. <laughs> that would um, be quite unseemly. So, depending on which race's city you capture, things can substantially change. Oh great, summoning circle. Every time you summon a unit, it'll be summoned to the city. Oh, summon rally point. You can make a city into a rally point, and then every time you summon units, you summon into a rally point. Convenient. Uh, capital, one of those, uh, your city can be, it'll be not a capital. Fair enough, and then based on which city is the capital, you presumably get some degree of corruption, so you get diminishing returns on income, etc. The population I've just discussed. Okay, that's screen 1 out of 11 on this screen. Bear with me. Why am I doing it this way? Well, presumably because I kind of want to know what I'm doing. On the other hand, doing it would also presume Doing it blindly would also not be appreciated. And I'm going over the game to a certain extent. Well, I guess the last thing you need is me going over the fact that I'm going over things. Unrest! Unrest is measured by the percentage of the content populace, right? It's a percentage amount of citizens that have turned to rebels. Rebels do not work. And do not pay any taxes. The scoundrels! Tax rate. Okay, presumably tax rate... Uh, the tax rate has uh, an implication as far as unrest is concerned. You raise taxes, you get more out of them. Just bleed them dry, but at the same time that pisses them off. As it does in the real world. No one likes taxes. Uh, the higher the taxes, the more goldish citizen has to pay, how the taxes generate unrest. Yeah. Owning more than 99 cities will decrease your income. <laughs> That's cute, but those numbers, of course, are fabricated. Uh, you have a limit on the number of cities that you can have. For instance, owning more than, than 37 cities will decrease my income. That's a city penalty. That's something that has been 
invented, and I guess reinvented in quite a few civilization games. Well, building wide always had benefits, so you would have what I believe was called the... Not the Sripalooza, the... The Infinite City Sleas. Well, of course, you would... You would be inclined to build more and more cities, and as you build more and more cities, out of every city, you would build a settler that could give you more and more cities, so you'd pretty much have a geometrical progression of the number of cities you'd get, and every single city would give you the benefit of building more cities, and of course, eventually, presumably you wouldn't build settlers in every single city, so those would come in as far as production is concerned, you would get units there, you would get buildings, potentially wonders there, but you would just keep expanding indefinitely, because why not? Those are... They are everything in those sorts of games. In Forexes, they tend to be everything. They generate income for you. They allow you to build more units, so they're also production facilities. Cities are everything. And there are no downsides to having more of them. So you can just have more of everything if you build more cities. Well, that's why this was introduced, to um, Help your enthusiasm towards building more and more cities, so to speak. You get more and more diminishing returns, you get more and more unrest, more and more corruption if you pass a certain threshold. So it keeps you... So it essentially offers a cap on the sorts of cities you reasonably want to build. You don't want to go over that. And of course it depends on a number of factors, the size of the map, the faction you're playing, yada yada yada. I, you can't possibly reasonably expect me to memorize all these things. Uh, farmers. Each farmer contributes two food and half production. Farmers contribute... Wait a minute, whoa, 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 hold on. How? Don't you place farmers on food tiles? You can assign them to farming production research. Okay, and... Uh, don't you assign these people to tiles? Don't you? Okay, farmers give you two food, half production, pay taxes normally. And I prompted that the army will desert, increase farmers to produce more food and prevent desertion. Right, because we have to have to have enough food, to have enough upkeep of time to generate food. Not necessarily just for the city to grow, but you also need um, food to keep the army fed. Workers generate two production, um, zero food. Three in case of dwarves and, and uh, the spider people. Pays taxes normally. Increasing the number of workers will help build and train faster. Fair enough. Yes, yes, yes. Sages could contribute research points. So they effectively... They don't generate the commerce or the power thing. They directly contribute research points. It's like... Uh, it's pretty much the same thing in civilization games. Pay taxes normally. Increasing the number of sages will help uh, research spell faster. Rebels... Rebels cannot be reassigned, contribute nothing, do not pay taxes, yes, 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 yes. But you can have, um, you can have, um, military police assigned, so we have militia forces that uh, guard town doing sieges, and presumably they also reduce the number of rebels, right? Do you have military police in this game? I don't know. Unrest, well, we are about to find out. Unhallowed do not generate unrest, unrest, nor can they manage my tax, wow. These are the main causes of unrest. Oh, sweet logos. Taxes. Race. Having multiple races within your empire may expand your capabilities, but suddenly we have some... Well, of course. What creates unrest? Taxes. To being too high. Multiculturalism. Um, events and spells. Yeah, random stuff can happen. Uh, buildings can reduce unrest. Obviously. Bread and slug. Whoa! Sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't have clicked. Um, buildings, yeah, bread and circuses. A garrison, so military police effectively, as in other forex games. Spells, you can cast spells at lower unrest. Got that. The filler numbers are unnerving. The two. I guess, um. They're too much in line with one another. They're all nines. Okay, so this is the city income. Depends on a number of factors, thank you. Mostly depends on citizen distribution, population, amount of resources within the borders. You generate production, which used to erect building strength troops. You generate gold from taxing units. You need to pay upkeep on buildings and on your troops. So you use gold for that. 
It's also possible to instantly finish production. Gotcha. So hurry production. You use gold for that. Excellent. You also use it to hire heroes and mercenaries. Oh, sweet logos. The complexity I'm dealing with. Power. Pure magical energy. You can convert to mana, research, and spellcraft. Commerce. Commerce. We know that that is commerce in uh, civilization games. Do we? Do you know civilization games? I presume you do. I hope you do. Presumably more than I do. Food. Food is your singular to maintain units per, on a per turn basis. Oh, hey, yes, I get that. You need to be able to... To... It's upkeep. It's essentially unit upkeep, so you don't spiral out of control and build too many units. Got it. You have to have enough food to... Uh, does it count for uh, this population within the city or only for, um, for the units outside the city? Food is used to maintain units on a per turn basis. To keep a watchful eye for the best to make sure all your troops are fed, will not deserve it in terms of this value is negative, the city cannot produce enough food to sustain itself, causing population loss. Okay, so you have to feed the citizens of a given city, you have to feed the units outside of the city. Negative energy, yeah, 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 That's that works as food for the unhallowed, and that works as pretty much everything for the unhallowed, because... <laughs> two things are certain, death and taxes, and if you have death, you don't have taxes. Yes, we have discovered research. You can generate research points so you can discover new spells. My goodness, yes, new spells. Events are displayed. Events that affect the city. Have over the icon to get information. Resources, resources. Uh, are placed within the city borders. If resources are placed within the city borders, then you automatically mine them. You don't have to build a road to connect to those resources to get those resources. Enchantments, because you can cast spells on a city and then uh, it's affected by something. Or well, random events can happen. No, that's events. So enchantments, yeah, spells cast by you or by your enemy. Events are a separate thing, on a separate screen. Okay, there's um, there's the cost of uh, oh god. So yeah, you can build units in a city, of course, and they have a certain cost in terms of production. They have a certain production time. Presumably, that's proportional to the production cost, right? Because we generate production, and then each turn some production is generated, and it's gonna take a number of turns to, to do that. And then there's upkeep that you'll have to pay for that unit to to be up to be upkept every single turn. Okay, housing. Uh, housing quickens population growth. Oh, okay, so that's how you increase the population. Not with food, but with housing. That's like Civilization 6, I believe. The bigger the spare typically in current and maximum population, the bigger the bonus. To make this uh, building active. Oh, a housing. A building you can build. Fair enough. A building you can build. Yes, that's what you do with buildings. It has to be placed in the queue. Right, so if you want to increase the population, you build housing, essentially. Housing lasts an indefinite time. Yeah, fair enough. Trade goods. Converts production into gold. Each production equals to half gold. Okay, fine. So you can choose to build trade goods. That's essentially the city generating gold or generating energy and smack or whatever. Oh, to make the building after this has to be first, you know, trade goes last indefinite time, has to be cancelled before the zoom building. Okay, units slash building info. If you want to build something, well, first of all, there are requirements. And then, um... And then, if, when you build that given thing, it may unlock some other things. Red flame, uh, frame means that you are not eligible to build a given thing, that there are statistics for every single thing. These things are quite complex. Long story short. Okay, and then, then you can see the progress of it all, and you can buy it, right? You can buy units by just spending gold on them, right? That are in the first place. It's not all nines, I appreciate that. Aside from the fact that everything else is in nines. Game number nine is Rhea Face the Unknown by the Italian. An exploration heavy adventure game, very much so similar to Mist. Scaled it down to 640 by 480, so it's capturing everything, and yet there are still black. Mia was not an interesting planet. It had large, uninhabited continents, an inhospitable climate, no resources. In short, it had nothing that would justify setting up a colony there. However, a base was set up, quite a large one in fact, with several thousand personnel and military support. 
This was so intriguing that journalists came to the planet to try and find out what the secret was. However, not all of them had the necessary patience, and only one of them, the most persistent, stayed on until it was decided to reveal what was going on. What is one going on? One day he was invited to the troop ship, which promptly departed for an unknown destination. The commander of the base immediately gave him an explanation. Immediately? As it turned out, the entire base had been set up in order to secretly investigate an alien artifact. A teleportation gateway, which teleported people to another dimension. Why would- It linked the planet Rhea with its sister planet, which was radically different, inhabited by some very strange beings. Why would you divulge that? The investigation was made more difficult because advanced human technology simply did not work in this alien dimension, and research could only be conducted through first-hand observation. So, a group of scientists had set up a small research colony on the other side, and the journalist was offered the chance to visit it and break the great discovery to the world. Wow! When the ship landed, they received disturbing news that the return connection was becoming increasingly unstable. They reconsidered whether anyone should be allowed to go through the gateway. Let's not go through. However, this did not deter the reporter who was eager to be famous and crossed into the other dimension without hesitation. Am I out of my mind? At that moment, the gateway disappeared, leaving him in a desert, standing in front of the walls of a strange city. Having no other choice, he simply had to face the unknown. Well, good luck. Well, good luck, idiot. No, wait, that's me. Ah, uh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> I appreciate that, that they were able to appreciate his persistence. Oh, oh, so you have decided to stay on this planet. Despite everything, everyone else gave up and you really want to know what's going on? Okay, we've discovered a gateway to another planet. Why would you ever do that? <sighs> anyway, presumably this can allow me to... No. Presumably this can... Uh, no. The black bars, however, are simply spectacular. Although I guess I understand that this is the spot for the inventory. And of course, if you scroll the way up here, you get nice menu buttons. That's no excuse. That's no excuse whatsoever. But uh, I guess it's becoming a bit of a theme of me being overly negative. It's not a bad game. I think the narration, opening narration was quite nice. And you have to keep in mind that this was not originally made in English. So it's translated into English because it's a Polish game that's made in Polish. I can go through here, go through the, all through the, and possibly all of those pathways lead to the same place. Although they seem to be disjointed, so possibly not. Go around the left side, go around the right side, or go directly to the gate. Well, I presumably am supposed to go to the gate, so let's go down, oh, I don't know, the left path. Okay. Fair enough. I can go. B I said I can go. B Was the button that brings me back? Um. Well, there must have been some mistake. There has to be a way back, right? Now, don't tell me there's no way. Fine, I can investigate this stupid fountain. But seriously, why would you not? Miracle of technology. This certainly isn't. Yeah, no kidding. A sundial, eh? Why is this suddenly a dot? Presumably I can leave this screen. Oh, right, right, right. Presumably the, the symbol here means turn around. Speaking of presumably, I probably ought to jot down these symbols. Ah, oh, sweet logos. One of those games. Uh, so it's a concerned face, followed up by a gangly little. But a sort of tree you would like to hang a swing on. Followed up by uh, something that vaguely resembles number five, which is now.
Yes, yes. Man, not biologically predisposed to deal with spatial rotation. So, seeing this as displayed, such a skewed fashion should not deter me. Clearly. Allegedly. It is one of the few established cognitive differences between men and women. In a book I've read what, once back in the day, seem to mostly claim that there really aren't many differences of such kind, aside from the abilities tied to rotation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight symbols are here. This is a very bizarre sundial, if it is a sundial at all. This does nothing, I can head back. And now that I am back, I may press one of these buttons, which do nothing. Oh, thank goodness. Um... Uh, to put it mildly, what the... So apparently you can rotate at will. Which I actually appreciate, this is intriguing. Is this actually 3D rather than raster based? Yeah, I think it is 3D, otherwise uh, they would have to go through hell to be able to with this. Can you rotate on this screen? No. If you zoom in onto something, then you cannot. This icon presumably tells you whether you can or cannot rotate. Can you rotate only in increments? Possibly. Can you use shortcuts? Of course you can. Very well then, if, if I click back, does it... It does move me. Anyway, let's mostly use the mouse and we'll use the keyboard for rotation. This is not of interest to me. I cannot really click on the walls of the castle. Why am I calling it the castle? Walls of the city, possibly. Are we just going around? Oh. Oh, I see. So this is the Rhino Sundial. Which has the following symbols. This first one... Actually, they're all the same. Let's leave. Get back to that one. I mean, it's not like you're going to just die, are you? This is a symbol on the on the buffalo sundial. Is it a buffalo? Is it just a bull? I don't know. I've marked the rhino symbol. Let's trudge onwards. Walk up to the gates. Presumably I need to solve a puzzle. Place the symbols where they belong. See, the beauty of it is I can solve it like this, but presumably out of the decency, um, I ought to check the third symbol. Although I could brute force this, obviously. And yes, I can map between these symbols, so the horn is going to be the rhino and so on. Naturally. Over here, next to the oasis, there is... The bull fountain on the... or the buffalo fountain, as I choose to conceptualize it. 
Over here, on the right side of the gate, I guess, is the... Is the rhino one. What if I turn around 180? Is the one in this direction? Clearly, yes. Right? Instead of going through there, I can go through here. Yes! The deal one. And this one points... It's nothing, it's high noon. That's as much as I need, thank you. I can now head for the gates. And solve the first mystery. Alright then. So double horn. Uh, that is the buffalo. The buffalo had this symbol of the... What about the rhino? Rhino had this. Oh, not, not the curly one. Um, the two scrolls, yes, this one. And the deer had high noon. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no, this is... Uh, impossible. No! It, it can't be! Can I not set any of these to noon? But it was! It, it was at noon! How am I... No! No, don't, don't be like this! I need this at noon! What?! Okay, I genuinely have no idea how I managed to solve that. Um, oh, maybe, maybe time progress. I mean, it's suddenly possible that time progress. I want to go back. What the hell was that? Well, I guess I can't go back anymore. That was utterly bizarre. It was at noon. Weird. A pig's trough. Maybe at least a little water is left there. Apparently, I am that desperate. Fair enough. Let's have a drink. Nope. Oh, it's only a piece of porcelain. You know, I'll take a piece of porcelain. Can I investigate this? Left click, right click, scroll. No. Ah, whatever. I'll take the bell. A bell I found in a trough. Can I make a trouble pun? Or is it too much of a stretch? It is too much of a stretch. Another doll! One I ought to access soon enough, but uh, presumably can't at the moment. I could glance at the puzzle before being able to solve it, but let's not do that quite yet. I want to go up the... Do I want to go up the stairs or do I want to go here? Let's go here. This is just the pathway back. It is the pathway back, you cannot go up the stairs. Very well then, I shall not venture up the stairs, but rather I shall go down the side alley. If that is at all possible. Actually, is there something to investigate right here? Anything? Nothing. All right, then. I just wanted to make sure. Through the gate we go. Why is this place so deserted? Yes. This is probably a map of the city, but I don't see any details. Everything is so small and unclear. Hmm. 
Well, either way, this is the entrance as far as I can tell. We've entered the courtyard, so presumably we're over here. Now these pillars, they seem to be of some note. Not sure we should venture into the dwellings quite yet. Those bells are quite mysterious. Going back to this after a brief break. What are those bells? What is up with that? Now presumably this pathway is not the same pathway as the pathway up there. Although, who knows. They are separate pathways. That is good to know. Speak like a human being. You know, I, I would like to say that that sounds backwards in more than one way, but it literally sounds backwards in one way. The natives will be of no help. Unsurprisingly. How about this though? Presumably also leads to an unhelpful native. Close doors are more promising than open doors. What am I talking about? No, sorry. Close doors are more promising than doors that lead to people. Because for closed doors, I can just find a key and gain entry. There's no one home. But if someone is home, they're going to be most unhelpful. I'm effectively going to be stuck. Where do I find a universal translator for this mess? It's probably the only way forward is down the street, at least from this side. I guess this is a fountain. Fair enough, what is that? A valve. But what is that terrible bat smell around here? Yeah, you can turn more than one thing. That's getting me nowhere, apparently. Perhaps there's a little pressure in the pipes. I don't know, there's something. Something wrong with the water, I presume. Otherwise, the fountain would be working. That statue is saying something.
Well then. But where is the water gone? Well, I didn't expect to go around anything, but yes, that is the question that is exactly on my mind. Where is it gone? And uh, I already dislike the puzzle I am about to solve. Requires you to memorize sounds. I'm horrible at memorizing sounds. That's not to say that I necessarily am tone deaf, but it is a remote possibility. A minute. <laughs> now that's not going to sound convincing at all to you, but <laughs> it sounds like the right one. I've tried. I've tried to use the onomatopoeia for um, water falling in Polish, which sounded like the right uh, sort of frame of mind, but uh, at the same time, you would not expect that to necessarily be a straightforward answer. At best, it would be a shortcut that you're not supposed to find out of your own accord. Not immediately. Yes, presumably this is tied to the lady over there, and I'll have to pick up on what she's saying, talking to her relentlessly. But let's explore further before I follow down that path. This music is pretty intense at this point, wow. Alright, let's move it away. Yeah, this is not getting me anywhere once again. Where does this path lead? Another gate. What a heavily gated community this is. And of course, um, I cannot enter this one. Fair enough. Go back down the alley. This rolls back and forth. Thus, it is put in the exact same. Someone's come out to greet me. Hello. Are you, mayhaps, one of the scientists that have been sent from my place, my time? Can you enlighten me? How do the law you will get out now? Why well, no, I don't mind it. What language is that? How do the law you will get out now? Why well, no, I don't mind it. <sighs> Finding people was the least helpful experience in this entire game. Sheesh. Oh, another tap. Of course, the taps are not working because there's something wrong with the water. Mostly that um, we can't quite get access to it. What do I do with the bell? How could it possibly be of any use? It wasn't an empty trough.
Maybe in some way tied to water. Only through video game logic do I suspect it to have any connection whatsoever to the problem. Otherwise a bell would not seem relevant whatsoever. Yeah, it's gonna be a person, right? What a nice place. But doesn't anyone live here? That was my initial intuition, but apparently... Wait. So you can move forward? What the hell? Intriguing. Okay, you can go in. I mean, I can't go in at this stage. A really nice view. What is this? Does this tell me anything? No, it doesn't. <laughs> of course it doesn't. Apparently the map view has not been unlocked yet. Or whatever this is. Well, I guess the obvious answer is that I should investigate the inner the hall. <laughs> and find out what exactly is expected of me. Slow down the Palpatine. I don't understand anything at all. Look at the map, you said what he very vaguely. Intriguing. I have a single item. And uh, at this stage, I am hopelessly stuck. What could possibly help me here? What can I even possibly do? Feels as if I've exhausted all possible interactions. Yeah, that doesn't lead me up the stairs. Of course it doesn't lead me up the stairs. Why would I even expect it to? Presumably it's a combination on the fountain. Does this provide me with any sort of hint whatsoever? Any sort of hint. Because I understand that there are two sets of pillars inside, one set of pillars on the outside. Well, let's visit the set of pillars on the outside, my goodness. The fountain is marked here, presumably. But other than that, this does not really seem useful in any capacity. I wonder if items are used automatically when you click on things that require them. Game number 10 is Tower of Time by Event Horizon, an isometric party-based RPG with active pause. I will tell you my story. Our story. What is the reason, you ask? The story needs to be told. And if there is no one left to tell it, its meaning will be lost. Why now, you ask, when all lies shattered around us? Yes. You are right, but we are at the end of times, and when something ends, something else begins. So my story might yet live on in this world. They gave me different names. They called me the hero, 
the one who sacrificed everything to save the people and the land. They called me the Destroyer, who betrayed the trust of all races and brought the end of times. I am both, and I am neither. I want you to hear me, see through my eyes, understand the reasons for the things I have done. And before I pass from this world, I need to be judged. I need you to judge me. Intriguing. Select mode, normal. RPG mode, explore the tower, descend to the depths in the defensive land. Two champions available at the start. Remaining champions join during the exploration. Leveling is restricted by upgradable class buildings. Main quests are mandatory. Party alignment depends on critical choices, no starting resources. RPG light. This is the mode I will almost inevitably not play, no matter what. It's the middle road. I don't want the middle road. Customize your party yeah, as you wish. Reach the depths of the towers uh, efficiently as you can manage. This mode is for those who prefer to focus on combat and party building. Completed the game and want to try harder difficulty different champions. To unlock, defeat the final... Okay. Permadeath. To unlock, defeat the final... Okay, you have to beat normal mode in order to play on any other one. Here's the difficulty selection. The story mode, for those who are in here just for the story. There's easy mode... For those who enjoy the story, but uh, <laughs> we'll upgrade the party. Might be surprised by enemies from that. No, no, no. no. Normal. Encounters are challenging. Expect to use the pause button. I've opted for the pause instead of slowing down time. Maybe. Maybe I shouldn't. I will see. Enemies will use everything they have to defeat my party. Of course they will. Hard mode. For veteran players. One mistake will not kill me, but a few will. Right? Enemies are ruthless and will exploit my weaknesses. As they should. Epic mode. Expect to die a lot. Okay. Be clever. Think, so think outside the box. Yes. Prepare before each fight and understand the synergies between the champions. Recommended only if you get familiar with the combat. Uh, let's go with epic mode. Obviously. I may fail horribly, but I will pick the highest difficulty level. And unless I get horribly, horribly punished, and uh, shown that I cannot possibly, in a reasonable time frame, actually live up to the expectations, and I will continue. Do go on. Our land is dying, and we are dying with it. This was not always the case. Artara was once a place of wonder and beauty. The five races thrived in peace and harmony. Then, long ago, something happened. Atara, five races. A cataclysm of unimaginable proportions. Something so disastrous, we don't even have a name for it. For when it destroyed our civilization, it took with it all knowledge of history. Wow. The past is now lost to us. So how do you know that they were thriving? The future is uncertain. We are left trapped. In a bleak and dismal present. The land itself is our enemy now. The weather extreme and unpredictable. Droughts persist for several weeks, followed by floods that wash everything away. Yet our gravest problem is the lack of sunlight. Storm clouds shroud our world in everlasting twilight. How does farming work? Without the sun, we are unable to grow food. How do you eat? And so we struggle to survive this dark world. A seemingly hopeless battle. I look back now to when I was a young boy. Living on the fringe of the human domain. While hunting for food, I stumbled upon ruins. Uncovered by a recent earthquake. A bad omen. Normally avoided. But... This time, 
something drew me in. Presumably, it was still pretty drastic when he was a young boy. It was not before all of these dark and troubling times. 25 years ago, the entire morning passed without the sign of a single rabbit. Rally was hunting so bad in the woods surrounding his village, it felt as if something unnatural lingered in the air. I might as well transition to first person, fine, mind word. A frightening thought. It sent a shiver down my spine as I slowed down my pace and gazed through the trees to a scene of total devastation. Forest laid before me, sundered, littered with jagged rocks and vast chasms, the aftermath of the earthquake three days past. Pushing back the impulse to flee home, I move closer. It all tells stories of the world regurgitating treasures from long ago. Loot! Just a... Fine, fine. Second person perspective. Just a look. Just a look, you convinced yourself. Quotation marks. Your curiosity shortly rewarded by the sight of a large fissure emitting a dazzling blue light. Blue's good. Against your put of judgment, you squeeze through the gap, leaving behind the world you've always known. Looks like a different world. Perhaps I should turn back. The elders are very strict about all the old stuff. You'll come across anything strange that belongs to the old times. Don't touch it. Don't press any buttons. Don't take any crystals. Come back and tell us all immediately. Sounds like the responsible thing to do. Don't touch anything. But they're scared of their own shadows. It can't hurt to look around. Well... I get that that's how adventure begins, but at the same time... Maybe, just maybe you have to listen to your elders from time to time. Refuse to explore on your own. Leave it in their capable hands. Just... Signpost. Okay, Guns of Sorrow, 3 miles. In the car, 9, Sink Bridge, 14. Complete the unfamiliar places. It's lovely. Because it... Uh, would potentially help someone orient him or herself, but um, at this point, whoa! We see a blue mist swirling lazily. Is this place floating in the air? Is it? It's the map. The journal. There is no journal. The inventory. There is no such thing. What is this inventory I speak of? Immediately pixel hunting. What is wrong with me? Yeah, apparently if there's one thing I am, it's thorough. As opposed to the statue, its eyes flicker with life and it speaks. That just says, Welcome to the sanctum of the first Magus. Please state your business. I I just want to look around. I the first Magus awaits you, Ambassador Charles Stable, representative of the king under the mountain. Well, that was, um... No, 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 wait a second, I am just a boy from the village, I was taking a look around, and then there was a... The Sanctum Guardians have been alerted, they will escort you to the administrative captain, please do not be alarmed. Maybe I'll just go back the way I came. Oh, no, you won't. Please stay where you are and do not be alarmed. The Sanctum Guardians will escort you to the Administrative Captain. Resistance is not advised. Wait apprehensively for a moment, but nothing happens. Yes, I'm sure the Guardians are alive and fine, or maybe undead and fine, or maybe they are automatons and uh, they are in a perfectly fine working condition. Or not. Whatever the hell was supposed to come cannot possibly come. It's all broken. Shattered. Below you lies a large throne lined with immense luminescent crystals. As you peer over the edge and focus your attention on one of the larger blue crystals, a faint voice calls out. 
Fear is the gatekeeper that turns back the masses. Have courage. Your destiny beckons. Who are you? What is this place? Come to me. The time is nigh. Ah yes, a mysterious dark voice. In an abandoned place where everything has fallen apart. Nothing works. I don't... I don't buy into this. This is probably a trap. A powerful desire to leap off the edge of this precipice to the throne far below washes over you. Sweat breaks across your brow as you force yourself back step by step. The voice vanishes, but the irresponsible urge to reach the throne remains. You look around for a safe way down. The throne. Should I try to reach the throne? It's all dilapidated. All in shambles. Well, maybe not all of it. Some of it... Surely some of it was originally this way. Look at the blue crystals on the chandeliers. Was it not that way originally? Was this not a place of blue crystals at all? But I'm trying to explore in every single direction, so... Bear with me. I don't want to miss anything. And I do mean anything. Of course I should pay attention to the minimap a tad more, but uh, I'm not. No, not to the extent that perhaps I should. Once again, are these chandeliers the way they were? Or were the blue crystals added later because of whatever happened to this place? And if the blue crystals were here originally, in this unearthly place, they're native to this. Then what exactly happened to the place? What part of what is going on here is the weird alteration? And what part of it is its natural state? What was its ground state of reality? Oh boy, monsters. And what was not? How am I supposed to be able to tell? Once again, this is otherworldly. This is unfamiliar. So to be able to tell what used to be normal for this world and what uh, befell it is next to impossible. I would need a guide. I would need someone to tell me. Perhaps the mysterious voice shall reveal something. Perhaps these golems shall escort me. Or perhaps they'll crush me to bits. Look, a boy approaches. Another human after all this time, but a mere child. He doesn't have the skill to survive this place. Oh, well, sorry. And yet he has come this far. Perhaps he is ready. Ready for what? This is all premature. He must develop the power. Or else others will manipulate him. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, definitely. Yes, I sense it now. Are you capable, boy? No. Do you know magic? No. Magic? No, of course not. I'm just a hunter. A hunter. But of what, I wonder? Tell us, do you always know where to aim your bow, even with your eyes shut? Enough, leave him be. He doesn't understand. Besides, he poses no threat. Yet. Okay, that doesn't make much sense. If he, does, if he poses no threat yet, then that's when you should kill him. If he is to pose a threat. If you were to pose a... Yes, let him pass. Let him see for himself. So what are these guardians supposed to do here, exactly? So they guard against the powerful? Against threats to what? They're protecting something. And perhaps whatever it is that they are doing is for the best. Very well, go ahead, boy. Embrace your fate. This is all very ominous. Large figure of stone and crystals looms over you. When you touch it, you can feel a strange rhythmic pulse. You quickly withdraw your hand. All these crystalline structures. So strange. Hmm. 
Let's look at this almond stand. A beautiful almond made of pure gold. Bookshelves. Rows upon rows of dust-covered books. You must tell the village elders about this. Perhaps they'll not be mad at you then. Look at all the books. Tomes of ancient lore. Ancient artifacts galore. First Magus, Ethrodol held office between fall and 39 of the 5th era. Which era is it now? It's all... Lost. The knowledge to left humanity long ago. Knowledge of the cataclysm. Of what caused it. Of how it came to be. Who is this? West Megus Helene. The love is between 152 and 202, the fifth era. First Magus. It's not a... It's not the office of a Magus. It's the office of the first Magus. The first among the Magi, presumably. Oh boy, Magocracy. Now those things can be can be powerful, amazing, imposing, and very reasonable at times as well. But at the same time, there are distinct drawbacks to Magocracy. With so many people... With power, in power, things can spiral out of control if they put their mind to it. If they really put their mind to it, if they focus on some objective, then as mages, they are presumably capable of accomplishing it. But woe be unto the universe if the objective they pick is harmful in nature. Because they will accomplish it, and it will be terrible in its effects. First Magus Audrus, love is between 113 and 114. 113, 114, 152. These are out of sequence. Ephrodol seems to be the earliest. The most elder of the first magi. Look at the tomes, the tomes! The number of them. But what of the throne, the crystal throne? A boy! You are still a child, and yet you heard my call. How can this be? Tell me. Well, you know, I happened to stumble upon this place. One thing led to another, and I, I don't know. Please let me go. I'm scared. I just want to go home. Yes, I can sense your fear. But this fear does not rule your heart. There is something else. You are different. As I once was so long ago. You are inexperienced, your ability underdeveloped, uh, undeveloped entirely, but there is no mistake, such dormant, feral, raw power, an indisputable match. I don't understand. There is much to explain, and while I have the will, I do not possess the time. I grow weaker by the moment. Oh my goodness. Now this, this is a heritage. <laughs> I grow weaker by the moment it took all my strength to raise the tower again, and I must rest now. Oh my goodness. Will we be able to communicate again? I mean, if I am to carry on your legacy, whatever that may be, I need to know what that legacy is. In time, you will forget this place. Um, you will grow strong and skillful and find a position in the all world. For this, before I release you, I must entrust in you an insatiable desire to return. Okay. Not quite a deal with the devil, but you will make this guy competent. You will make him succeed in the world if, in which he dwells right now. But in exchange he will desire to return and presumably serve this master eventually. And presumably become an heir of his to some extent. Yeah, watch me spend half an hour just going through the intro sequence of this game. I I feel strange. What are you doing to me? Uh, just let it happen, young boy. Just let it happen. For some day, many days from now, you will return to this tower. 
Seek me in its depths, and on that day, when my power has recovered, we will talk again. Please, please, let me go. He's just told you that he will. You'll be able to return to your world. You will forget this place soon enough. You will thrive in whatever you choose. But then, perhaps two or more decades from this point on, you shall return. Forgive me, boy, you will come to understand, I promise. The memory of this meeting will vanish from your mind once you leave this place. But you will return, as surely as a seedling reaches for the sun. As in... <laughs> any seedling that wants to survive ultimately reaches in... It's not, it's not a sense of inevitability, necessarily. It's not that seedlings want to do it, but if they... <laughs> it's not even that they know what's good for them. But it is good for them. It is... It's trophism. It's, um, ultimately what... Uh, it's what's out there for them. Go now, run! This place is not safe for a child, even for you! Learn thyself. Give thyself to the world as I have. Return when you are ready. Crevice. It's a portal, essentially. All right. Descending the stairs led me to a crystal throne which glittered with swirling light. I felt strangely compelled to approach and sit. As I took my place upon it, a sudden torrent of light enveloped me. The illumination overwhelmed my senses. I grew nauseous and weak, but before I lost consciousness, the throne ejected me to the floor. I fled and told no one what happened for fear of being deemed tainted and banished from the village, for this was the way of my people. I tried to forget the experience, to convince myself it was my overactive imagination. But the visions that followed said otherwise. He was supposed to forget. The night, the nightmares came. But he didn't. The torment highlighted my confusion, as each morning I remembered little, fragmented images, words which made no sense, nothing more. I would have thought myself mad if not for the strange, incomprehensible symbols I often drew in the sand. Proof that forces beyond my understanding were at work. People in my vicinity kept their distance, and I think they feared me. Over time, they learned to tolerate my unusual nature. But I was always alone, left to brood and ponder my strange fate. One winter, it all came flooding back to me. I realized the crystal throne sat not at the bottom of some ancient ruins, but at the top of a construction incomprehensible in scale. That the ruins were not ruins of some lost city or ancient castle, but a single massive tower buried deep within the earth. And buried upside down. Some unexplainable force had lifted the construction into the sky, rotated it, and driven it into the ground. In that moment of clarity, I knew one thing above all others. I had to go back to that place, for the power within was the one thing that could save Artara. Years later, I found myself a commander in the last human kingdom's militia. Oh, goodness. The king, a just man and good friend, granted me a favor for my years of loyal service. I had but one request, a small force of men and resources to return to the village of my birth and explore the tower. Preoccupied by an eroding empire, 
the king held little interest in ancient ruins and towers. He did, however, see the reclaiming of a long-abandoned village on the border of an ever-shrinking kingdom as a boost to the people's morale. He gave me what I requested, and his blessing. Excellent. So, here I am, returning to the very place which has haunted me my entire life. It is a desolate place now. Time has not been kind to my village. Most of it has rotted or been washed away. Yet the tower remains just as I remember it. I am in awe of the power within, and perhaps fearful. The men and I are setting up the camp in the village, while Cain and Maev, two of my most capable warriors, will scout the tower. Ahead of you. Now I'm again, smart. I feel its call. We must uncover its secrets. We must find a way to reach the power within. If we fail, it will be the end of us. <laughs> At long last, just as impressive as I remember. I have never seen anything like this. Such green, healthy looking plants. That's not even it. Although presumably the green plants are... Presumably all of this is held together by the tower. It's luminescent energy. Protecting this land somehow. Whether by natural or enchanted means, something about the soul here produces abundant life. The key to our salvation. Whoever returns with the secret will be king of our Arteria, or queen. But now let's not bicker over those sorts of details now. It doesn't matter in the end. What matters is the salvation of this land. I will not have us backstabbing each other. Is this a secret we came for, my lord? New crops. It's not about the crops. It's whatever allows them to thrive. We could have crops everywhere, but somehow over here they grow. I don't think so. No, there must be something else here. Well, there is one secret, there may be others. The profit, I mean, potential here could be limitless. My Ev, are you some goddamn rogue? Thank goodness I trust you. If you seek to uncover the secrets of this place, then we will do so. This guy is loyal, presumably, <laughs> to the very end. Although I'm not sure I trust my F. My F and I will scout the area before you proceed. No need for unnecessary risks. Yeah, and if you get to the secret in time, I'm sure you will still retain that sense of loyalty and will not just turn against me. With your newfound power. I appreciate your concern is unwarranted, my old friend. After all, I survived this place as a child. It was back in the day. You are no longer a child, my lord. You are a commander and we swear an oath to protect you. There may be outlaws or raiders lurking. <laughs> Scoundrels are of no concern. Game number 11 is Two Worlds by Reality Pump, an open world RPG. Character creation. Not that. Uh, well. Let's be on hard. It's not that much to customize, is though? It really doesn't appear to be. Oh, 
Oh yeah, like, like that's actually susceptible in any reasonable capacity. Oh, I see. I'm not going to adjust the shape of my eyes, etc. Let's ignore all that nonsense. <laughs> Alright, I could head out, or I could refuse to head out and just explore for a bit. Except there's not much to explore, I guess. Behind us in beyond, or behind us in... You need to block? I think it's reasonable to just wait for them to slice. And then, you know, pounds. Okay, how do you exactly investigate this? There has to be a way. Let's have a look. You click space. Double click to pick up. Is the skill screen, my inventory, the magic screen, all sorts of schools of magic. <laughs> Four elements plus necromancy. Here is the map. Is my reputation and statistics. Nothing too fancy. But still, it's appreciable. Can I just click this to pick everything up? Yes, I absolutely can. Let's see. Indeed. Thanks to the torch, let's see. Let's have a look. Ooh, items. As one would obviously expect. Some banners here, presumably nothing terribly interactive. Barrels! Barrels galore! There's a reasonable number of barrels. Some skeletons for the ambience. Can the gate be opened? Yes, it can. It still can. Can this be opened? Yes, it can. In that case, I'll try to go in the other direction. Can this be open? No. <laughs> well, I guess the only way to go is out. <laughs> is that a help? Can I pick it up? I can pick it up. Of course I can. Hello, Tago. I told you not to follow me. Why are you here? The village elder sent me. He wanted me to bring you the payment should you not return to the village. And why should I not go back there, pray? Uh, some people came to Comoran when you left. They asked for you. People, tell me more. Swiftly now. 
Warriors. Hired ones. Not very friendly. Ooh. One of them stayed to await your return. Ha. Huh. The elder clearly thought I would run rather than meet this man. Forsooth, twas generous. But he now has lost the chance to save money. I do not understand. Where I come from, no one pays unless forced to. Nay, in Talmont, we honor good work. Twould appear I have much to learn of Talmont. Will you return with me? But that tough stranger... He should have been here a long time ago. Mayhap a friend of yours? No, but he has something for which I have searched for a long, long time. Pray tell me, friend, exactly where can I find him? In a hut, south of the village. The mayor offered him better lodgings, but he refused. Hut south of the village. Do you not fear the orcs? I have never seen an orc in my life. Gromes and bandits are our plague, and the Skeldon House men are the worst of the bandits. They put you to work in the mines if they think you sympathize with the rebels. Who are these rebels? Ultar Karga was once the ruler of Talmont, but an edict of King Emery's forced him to hand over to the House of Skeldon. Five years ago, that was. We all thought we had seen the last of him, but then they returned. And with them came the rumor that Lord Skeldon had hatched a plot against the king himself. Is there any truth behind this rumor? How can we common villagers know of events in court? I can tell you only that Ebrat Skeldon proved many times that he cares only for the good of the house. <laughs> Tell me about Talmont. Since Skeldon's rule of Talmont began five years ago, things have gone bad. Every village is isolated now. Could this be why you hired me when you could have called the guards? Ebrat Skeldon, the leader of the ruling house, concerns himself only with rebels. We have learned to solve our own problems. I saw no patrols on the roads. The guards are afraid of the rebels. Altar Kaga wants to regain power and his Karga clan is all over the mountains here. Be cautious. All right then. Ooh, first person perspective is available. Intriguing. <laughs> so this is a single quest line here. All right. I got told you about the stranger waiting for you in a hut south of the village of Comorin. This must be the same man who contacted you two weeks ago and asked to meet you in Thalmond. What about Comorin village? A mage works for the society, Ferid Redismos. With an old friend, was sent to Thalmont on a mission more than a year ago. Visiting him might be a good idea, especially in times like these, when any help you can provide or receive may be of real importance to your quest. What is my quest, exactly? But yes, presumably I should visit him in Comoran village. Actually, no, like, well, I, I can't necessarily. So I was sent to Thalmont a year ago. Well, I might as well to go to Talmont. Everything seems to be there. Where is that? This is Comorin Village. This... It... Perhaps we're in Talmont. Perhaps all of this is Talmont. Go to Comorin Fridge in Falmont then. I need to head south. I'm positioned east. 
can just look at the minimap. I'm tempted to explore the tiniest of bits, why not? Might be something fancy for me to see. It's intriguing that I received a couple of spells from the get go. At least teleports. Even if so, I can't quite make use of them. Not yet, anyway. Let's venture south. Oh boy. What's that? Inventory full. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? I'll have to sell some of my stuff. I'll equip something. Let's see. This is... It, wait a minute, did I just toss it away? Here, yes, I did. This is better, it does not have a hood, but it is superior. Oh my goodness, I can do uh, chemical potions. I'm carrying a torch and a sword. Can't quite carry buckles and such. Ah, the robust quiver is better. You can auto sort, which is amazing. Right, perhaps it is not quite amazing, but it, it is handy, it's convenient. I'll have to sell my items. Might have to fight wolves on my way. What is that spell anyway? That's well, just a fire bolt. I... Why are they not on the right if they're on the left? Shouldn't they be in the spellbook anyway? Fair enough, I'm not going to argue with the spellbook. Presumably it knows its stuff. Now if I right click... Yeah, I just blast the wolves with the right click. Well, that doesn't appear to work as well as I would like it to. That's quite a few wolves! Oh, don't tell me I'm just going to die to a wolf pack at the very start of my adventure. Oh, that would be so pathetic. I shouldn't have messed with them! Die. Uh, let's drink up this mana potion and start blasting them.
Now this is what I get for picking the highest difficulty level on one hand, but on the other, holy crap, that's an intense encounter. Maybe that ought to teach me. Not to mess with the wildlife unnecessarily. <laughs> wow. Well, I fused up full potions on that, haven't I? Oh, marvelous. What am I even picking up? <laughs> what am I collecting off of these beasties? Wolf heart. I was about to say that, but... Uh... Okay, I've killed four wolves, and now I'm ripping out the hearts! <laughs> How about I actually get to the... I can kill this! That's just a beaver, isn't it? Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! Beaver fat! Increases vitality by two. And they ought to cook it fine. Can I actually... Whoa. One object can be brewed. Can I... Can I cook these? Presumably it's not going to... Enter a formula. Poison. Minus 44 HP. Increases vitality by 5. Will last 2 minutes, 42 seconds. Required HP 45. Well, that sucks. But of course I can sell it. <laughs> My experiments with alchemy have not proven terribly helpful to my cause. What is this? Is that helping me? Does this provide a temporary buff? Permanent buff? Anything? Perhaps I have to check the map. Might be some news though. <clears throat> Magic sauce. Thank you, map. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy. Goblins. Let's mess with them. And I'm out of... Let's well draw this, the sword out. Whoa! You know, I think there's a lesson here in all of this. Namely, if you choose to play on hard, don't mess with the locals too much. He's unarmed! Slash him! Ow. Dash back. Wait for him to stop attacking. Dash back. Whoa! Not only are they incredibly tough, but also very tactically inclined. Whoops. I guess the lesson could be don't mess with literally anything. Because everything is out to get you and everything can and will kill you.
No, this deals more damage. Can I just throw stuff away? Yeah, I think I would like to wield this. Those swords seem fairly useless. Let's have a look. It's comparatively useless. So a sharpened stick appears to be superior to what I was previously wielding. Oh boy, there's still this guy. Should I mess with him? I must. There's two of them. No. Well, they're gonna mess with me regardless, and I'm out of potions. Wow. That's a checkpoint, I guess. I can mess with the chicken. Whoa, over there. Hello, goblins. Whatever the hell you're called here. Grums. Well, Nelly. Now I could simply wait for the fireballs to recharge and deal with these creatures that way. Whoa! <laughs> this is astonishing! You know, sometimes you can really screw yourself over. My goodness, that's just a single silly goblin camp on the way to the village. But apparently, if I know what's good for me, I will avoid the hell out of them. Hello? Good day to you. There is a law that new villages in the northeast of Talmont pay no taxes for the first five years. If you pay your taxes too late, you'll end up there. 18 hours of heavy axe work with no ale. I heard they send food to Covenger Village in winter. Hail. Now, I could talk, talk to all of them, but I'd rather try to move things along and um, try to find out if there's anything I can actually... Stranger in Talmont? I have not seen you here before. Due to further my quest. You are a Brotherhood man, eh? What are you doing so far up north? The Brotherhood has many interests all over the country, and Talmont is no exception. Wait, I recognize you. You are the bounty hunter. Are you seeking employment? Perchance... Visit Delorna, the horse breeder and supplier. Speak with him. He has demanded protection from the Brotherhood, but we do not have anyone who can help him at this time. Thanks. I will think about it. He demanded from the Brotherhood protection. He doesn't want to be protected from the Brotherhood, he wants to be protected by the Brotherhood. So there's that. Hello? You are not an easy man to follow. It took us months to find you. Hold. Who are you? My name is Gandahar. The message you received was from me. Hello. I came to Talmont as soon as I read it. Why are you so cautious? My masters will tell you everything. I am only a messenger. Okay. Where is my sister? I saw her only a few days ago. I can assure you that she is in good health. 
Nothing will happen to her if you do as we say. If you harm one hair of her head, you waste my time. Do you know the goat's cave south of here? Aye, I do. My masters await you there. I recommend you listen to them first before you do anything hasty. Why will they not meet me here? I told you, I am only a messenger. Listen to them, and no one will be harmed. That does explain a lot. Quite a decent bit. Explains why he was awaiting a messenger. He was not afraid of him, but at the same time, um, was eager to see him. That start presumably signifies a level up. Yes, I have a single skill point. Can you reset your skill points? It doesn't appear that way. Now that I think about it, I might have assigned a couple of those points just by left clicking. There's no way to unassign. There's no way to... Uh, well, it is apparently... It is a fairly straightforward interface. I'll put it that way. Let's have a further conversation with them. Are not known for their patience. <laughs> you must speak with them immediately. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's not like I'll extract any further information from this guy. Let's try to have a conversation with the mage. Hello. It's good to see you still in one piece, friend. You seem to be in fine fettle. Ferid, I should have known you would end up in a place like this. So the society finally had enough of you, eh? How true. My future in a society looks bleak. Is your research such a problem then? No, my friend, quite the opposite. But certain people just cannot work with a genius. I have assembled a perfect copy of a genuine activator. It is something radical. A what? What do you mean? Ancient teleport sites like this one behind me only function with special activators. Each teleporter has its own activator. Unfortunately, we have only found a few of these elven wonders, but if my prototype works, then we shall not need them. A few more tests and it will be ready. Well, here you are, so you may as well assist me, just for old time's sake. Take this activator and activate the neighboring site. These things send a message here when activated, and I need to be here to receive it. For you, surely. Where is the site? I will mark it plainly on your map. Lovely. Any news on this house? The society found out that the orcs invaded because of religion. The orcs and religion? Hard to believe somehow. It is said that a mysterious holy man is going among the tribes, prophesying the return of Aziral. Bah, superstition. Didn't the orcs nail him to the gates of Gorgamar, like they did with all those false prophets before?